fan. Good evening, friends, and welcome into Atlanta Braves baseball. Tonight from Minute Maid Park in Houston, Texas, it's game six of the 2021 World Series between the Atlanta Braves and the Houston Astros. Atlanta comes into tonight's action with a three games to two lead. They'll be sending Max Freed to the mound, and he'll be taking on Luis Garcia. Alongside Joe Simpson and our producer engineer, Jonathan Chadwick, Ben Ingram here with you. And Joe, the series has shifted back to Houston, Texas. Braves won one of the games here when they first came here to start the series, looking for just one more to take on the trophy. Well, it's going to be a wild atmosphere, to be to be sure. The roof is open here at Minute Maid Park. But we noticed uh, a little while ago, it's a late-arriving crowd. There were a lot of empty seats here at the ballpark uh, less than a half hour ago. It's beginning to fill in, of course, and I'm sure it'll be a packed house by the time it's all over and will be very raucous. But uh, obviously, the, the pressure's on the Astros. They got to win two. The Braves only have to win one. Uh, for the Braves to get that done, you need a really good start out of Max Freed. These last two starts for Max have hardly been his best. He was the pitcher of the month in September. His final two months of the regular season, one of the biggest reasons the Braves are even here. Now they're asking him to get out there and get it done one more time. Yeah, he went 7-0 and in those last two months, and he pitched a great ball game in Milwaukee, and he, oddly enough, had the same umpire behind the plate on that occasion in game two in Milwaukee that he'll have tonight, and that's Mike Kuczynski. I don't know if that's in Max's favor or not. We'll wait to see. But one of the things that Max has got to concentrate on tonight, and that's keeping that leadoff man off base. Off base. Uh, 11 times the Astros have gotten their leadoff man on in the World Series eight times he's scored. He's got to prevent that from happening tonight. And a big part of that, Jose Altuve, who's been yeah. on base eight times and scored six of those times. Yeah, he's part of the reason uh, that the 11 men have gotten on and scored. Uh, so he is a key at the very beginning of the ball game. And the first inning sometimes can be a little problematic for Max. Let's hope he gets through the first inning okay and then coasts in like he did in game uh, two here a week ago. I'd like to give Max the same run support that the Braves put up there the other night in game in game five. Unfortunately, that lead did not hold. Well, it was a different lineup for the Braves tonight. Ozzie's dropped down to the seventh spot. Solaire's going to bat second. Freddie's going to bat third. And uh, obviously, Brian Snitker trying to go with some hot hands at the top of the order to try to make something happen early. Let's talk about what this Braves lineup is going to see on the mound. Luis Garcia is going to be out there for Houston. He started game three on Friday. He's going on short rest. He's done that once before. That was in April versus Seattle. Much different circumstances going on short rest tonight versus April in Seattle. He admitted that he was a little nervous before his start for game three. He said, I've calmed down. I've got confidence in myself. His manager, on the other hand, said he's going to have a very short leash. He can't get into trouble early. They were hoping he could go five innings. I think that's uh, you're really kind of dreaming if you're Dusty Baker. Because right. then he backed off and he said, but we'll take three innings. Right, exactly. We well, went three and two-thirds last Last time he was out there, gave up one run on three hits, struck out six. And this is a guy who was out there for the clincher of the ALCS versus Boston. So he's pitched in big game situations. So has Max Freed. We'll see who can execute tonight. I just like Mike Max's chances, especially after reading a story today where it could have been that the Astros were, that he was tipping his pitches to the Astros and giving them a bit of an advantage. Well, if they picked up on that. Somebody else did too, and Max will fix that tonight. All right, looking forward to seeing how Max will do. You know that Max is ready for this situation. Let's take you now through the starting lineups, and here's Joe to introduce you to the starting line for both squads. And as you know, the Braves will be the visiting team, and there will be a DH tonight here in the American League ballpark. So for Atlanta, leading it off, playing left field will be Eddie Rosario. Jorge Soler will bat second. He's the DH. Freddie Freeman will bat third tonight. He's at first base. The red-hot Austin Riley is at third base batting cleanup. Adam Duvall will bat fifth, and he'll play center field. In right field batting sixth is Jock Peterson. Ozzie Albies drops to the seventh spot in the order. He'll be at second base. Hitting eighth and doing the catching will be Travis Darno, And Dansby Swanson, the shortstop, will hit ninth. Again for Atlanta, it's Rosario, Soler, and Freeman. Riley, Duvall, and Peterson. Albies, Darno. And Swanson. For Dusty Baker and the Houston Astros, here's their starting lineup for game six. Jose Altuve will lead it off and play second base. Michael Brantley will bat second in left field. For the second straight game, Carlos Correa will hit third and play shortstop. Jordan Alvarez will be the cleanup hitter, and he is now the DH. Batting fifth at first base, Yuli Gurriel. 
Kyle Tucker's in right field, batting sixth. Batting seventh again at third base, Alex Gregman. Jose Siri gets the start in center field. He'll hit eighth. And Martin Maldonado, who drove in three runs in game five, will do the catching, and he bats ninth. Again, for the Astros, it's Altuve, Brantley, and Correa. Alvarez, Guriel, and Tucker. Bregman, Siri, and Maldonado. The umpires have met at home plate and have exchanged these lineups that I just gave to you. As I mentioned, Mike Michlinski's behind the plate. At first base will be Alfonso, or excuse me, Alfonso Marquez is the man out of the rotation. He will actually be behind the plate tomorrow if there is a game seven. At first base is Chris Conroy. Ron Culpa is at second. Tom Hallion is at third. Down the left field line will be Dan Bellino and Ted Barrett will be down the right field line. It's a very pleasant night. 72 degrees mostly all day long. It has cooled off a little bit, but not much. The roof is open for an absolutely beautiful night here at Minute Maid Park. The wind is, looks like it's blowing out a little bit toward left field. And uh, not that hard, but uh, it might affect some balls hit that way. And as you know, the short porch, the Crawford boxes, only 315 feet away down the left field line. The Braves and Astros split two games here. The first two games of the World Series with the Braves winning game one. The Astros bouncing back to win game two against Max Fried. So they'll hope to continue their good work at home after they pick up the win in game two. Luis Garcia leads his team out onto the field. Garcia, 24 years old, 6-1, a solid 245 out of Venezuela. He went 11-8 in the regular season with a 248 ERA. Ben gave you his numbers a moment ago. For game three, he lost two to nothing. His problem was walks. Three and two-thirds innings. He did give up three hits, but only one run despite the four walks. One was intentional, and the reason was because he struck out six. He throws hard. His fastball, 96 or 97 on that occasion. Mostly during the season, he was in the 93 to 94 range. But a little adrenaline always helps. And he's got the awesome cutter and slider that he uses very effectively about 25% of the time. It's a nasty one and very hard to hit. His overall numbers in the postseason have not been good. Going back to the first round of divisional playoffs against the White Sox, in 13 innings, he has walked 11 and struck out 18. He's gone one and two with a 7.62 ERA. He's had good numbers at home this year. He went five and three here at Minute Maid Park. So he's about set to get underway here. He completes his warm-ups. Again, it's a beautiful night for baseball. Game six of the 2021 World Series. And here to tell you about it once again is Ben Ingram. Thanks so much, Joe. And like you mentioned, a perfect night with a roof open here in Houston, Texas. Game six in this series. And the last time the Braves won the World Series, they did it in six games against the Cleveland Indians in 1995. Braves will be taking the field tonight, and they're visiting gray tops, gray pants, red lettering, red numerals, outlined in navy. Atlanta across the chest on top of the red tomahawk. And the homestanding Astros, white uniform tops, white pants, navy lettering, navy numerals, orange trim, and Astros arching across the chest of their white uniforms. It'll be Eddie Rosario, Jorge Soler, and Freddie Freeman new up with the Braves here in the top of the first inning. And looking to make some noise early versus the 24-year-old right-hander out of Venezuela, Luis Garcia. Eddie Rosario digging around in the left-hand batter's box. Astros infield already in the shift to the right side with Bregman, the only Astro representative, on the left side. Right-hander Garcia sweeps off the rubber, plants his right foot on the first base side of the rubber while looking into his catcher, Maldonado. He is ready, and now for the ball game. The first pitch is taken for a called strike. Underway here in game six. On a one count on Eddie Rosario. Luis Garcia with that rock the baby wind up. Takes him a while once he gets started, but he's got a good arm. Four and one on Eddie. Garcia rocks and now fires. A one pitch is slot foul right back into the screen above on deck hitter Jorge Soler. 
So quickly an 0-2 count on Eddie Rosario. But the good news is he's been about as good as anybody with two strikes in this series. He makes you work. He doesn't just automatically chase whatever you throw up there, 0-2. batter of the ball game. Eddie Rosario looking at an 0-2 count against the right-hander Garcia. Steps and now brings the 0-2 to Eddie. Swung on at a fly ball out towards right field. Trying to make a play and diving for it. Kyle Tucker rolls over onto the grass as he squeezes the baseball. One down on a terrific play by the Astros right fielder. Just long enough for Tucker to make the play, and it was a really good one. Yeah, it was. Great diving catch. Had to lay out for it. Held on to it. Robbing Rosario of an extra base hit. One down for Jorge Soler, who homered in game one of this series. One down, bases empty, no score. Jorge batting second in the order tonight. Garcia's first pitch to Soler. Foul back. And a fastball 95 and a no one count down Jorge. Jorge takes a walk back behind the plate, walking between Mike Muslinski and the catcher Martin Maldonado. And dwarf Muslinski as he walked by. There's the 0 1 pitch on the way to Solaire. Variety deals. Foul back, nothing in two. Fastball 96 from Garcia. He's looking for very consistent fastball command tonight. Look here some of those woes that he had with the bases on balls earlier in the postseason. 0 2 pitch on the way. Just down low, one ball, two strikes. I like what Brian Snedker's done with his lineup. It was time to move Ozzy out of the three hole. He has struggled mightily in the World Series. Put his back down a little lower in the lineup and get Rosario, Solaire, and Freeman up in the first inning. A little thunder early. Very similar to what we saw Dusty do with his lineup the night before. Yeah, you're exactly right. One two pitch. Solaire well, takes one down. Maldonado back. Caught that one somewhere other than his mid. A two two count. Want to be pretty patient versus Garcia. And second look at him here in this series. Again, he started game three on Friday and going on short rest to get the start in this ball game. 2 2 to Jorge. This low three balls, two strikes. He's another one. He's just like Rosario. You might get him 0 2, but don't think that he's just going to start free wheeling up there and swing at whatever you deliver. He's got a full count. Hitting just under 295 in the World Series. Looking for a big base hit right here at the top of the first inning. No one on base, one down, no score. There's the payoff pitch from Garcia. He runs it a missed strike three. Two down here at the top of the first inning after a fly out and a strike down. He's up to ready. Pitch. He went to an off-speed pitch, three and two. Slider got him. Got him to chase ball four. He's looking for a one-two-three inning. Garcia with a solid season this year. Became the first rookie pitcher in franchise history to finish the season with an ERA below three and a half and more than 167 strikeouts. And he's hoping for a one-two-three top of the first as he goes to work versus Freddie Freeman. Pitch on the way. Freddy takes a call at strike. Right out of with a fastball at 96. Freddy hitting 288 in the postseason. And four home runs. Go one to Freddy. Rolled foul towards the Astros dugout. Fans rising to their feet, waving orange towels. 
Looking for one more strike at a one, two, three top of the first. No towel waving in Atlanta. We didn't need towels. <laughs> we got the chop, baby. Nothing in two on Freddie. Garcia kicks and fires. Freddie is swinging and misses strike three. That one tailed low and away, and Freddie couldn't quite reach it. That's a one, two, three inning for Luis Garcia. Into the bottom of the first inning, no score here in game six of the World Series. Max Freed on the mound, and here's a look at the Atlanta ladder around him. Freddie Freeman at first. Ozzie Albies at second. Dansby swats it over at short, and Austin Riley hands the hot corner at third. And the outfield for the Braves, Eddie Rosario in left. Adam Duvall patrolling center field, and Jack Peterson is manning right. Had a battery of Travis Garneau and harness with Max Freed and the 27 year old out of LA on the mound. And we're going to get it done for the Braves tonight. 6'4, 190. Started game two on Wednesday. That was here. Astros won that ball game 7 2, and Max won five innings, giving up six runs, five of which were earned. And here we go into work here versus Jose Altuve. And the first pitch on the way. Fastball outside, one ball and no strikes. Leadoff man in every inning is going to be critical to Max Freed, no matter who it is, but especially this guy. Ball and no strikes. Max brings it. Just outside with a sinker, two balls and no strikes. Astros with a couple of home runs this series. Altuve has hit them. He's been on base a lot, as we mentioned earlier. He has scored six times and been on base eight times. 2-0, ground ball, deep and hold. Dansby backhands, fires overall balance, and it brings Freddie off the bat. An infield single for Jose Altuve as he beat it out at first base. One of the things that really hurt Max in game two hits and weak ground balls that got through for base hits. There was another one perfectly placed between Riley and Swanson. He's able to, Altuve, able to leg it out. And you mentioned those style base hits. He gave up four straight in one inning. As he gave up four runs in the second inning of that ball game. A lot of that seeing eye singles from the bottom of the order. One on, no one out. Here's Michael Brantley, left on left matchup. Max steps towards first, throws that way, and back in standing Altuve. Max one and two this postseason. He's lost his last two outings, one in this series, one in the championship series versus L.A. Last two outings, 11 runs allowed in nine and two-thirds of an inning. Another pick off the first. This time he put more on it. Now two bait back on the back standing. Got a great move. Hopefully that will neutralize any thoughts they have of running because they have been running as a lot of teams have on the Braves this whole postseason. No score bottom of the first. Runner at first base and no one out for Michael Brantley. Reed set of the belt, leg kick of the delivery. Just up it in with a fastball at 94. One of the things that worked for Max after the second inning of game two was his curveball and slider. That's why he went into those pitches and retired 10 in a row at one point. awaits. Reed set. 1-0 pitch to the plate. There's a strike. Able to find the corner with a fastball. He likes to come inside with that fastball, but how much more consistent does he need to be away with that heater? Well, to the right-handers, very. Left-handers does it not so much. I just want him to collect himself and not be in a rush. Got a 1-1 count on Brantley. Taps the bat against his left shoulder. 1-1 pitch. Slow chopper out there to Freddie. He's got it. Tosses to Max. Max reaches for the bag, and he can't get there. Max pleading his case now with Chris Conroy. For 
just a moment when he thought about second but thought better of it. Max passed him on the infield grass. And by the time his toss got there, it was a bang bang play at the bag. I think, I think Max got stepped on too. Yeah, they're going to come check him out. Here comes George Bula's brave trainer. Max looked like he turned his right ankle over to the inside of the foot. Oh, and then he got stepped right on the outside of the right ankle. Did he ever hit the bag? You know what? The way he, his foot got stepped on, it's almost like it pushed his foot toward the bag, but it never got to the base. But did Bradley ever touch the no, bag? No, he didn't. No, Brantley never touched first base. He stepped right over it. He stepped on the foot and then stepped right over. The left foot of Brantley came right down on the right ankle of Max Free. Well, one of the things that this time has given the Braves is a chance to see the fact that Brantley never stepped on the bag. They're tending to Max. He's going to throw a couple of tosses to make sure he's okay. So did Max ever touch the bag after he recovered? Because if he did, Brantley should be out. I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, he did. He did. Brantley should be out at first base. He never touched the bag going across, and Freed eventually ran his foot across the bag. They should be looking at this. He's now stepping on the bag. And no one is calling for this to be reviewed. They said error charged to Max Free. That's the fifth error in six games by the Braves defense. So unlike this ball club. Now first and second, no one out. Offering on the way that Miss Lowe inside. Is that not a reviewable play? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. Anything like that where there's a call on a base, we bet. Because they sh showed a shot of the Braves dugout. Walt Weiss is on the phone with the video guys, and they said no. Well, maybe they hadn't seen that Brantley didn't touch, never touch first base. First and second, no one out for Carlos Correa. Three deals. There's a called strike. Came at him with a fastball. Once again, soft contact results in a base runner. I'm showing the replay time and again on Fox to show that Brantley never hit the bag and that Freed did. Ball to strike now in Correa. Freed kicks and fires. There's a strike. Fastball right of the knees. One ball, two strikes. A lot of fastballs here early in the first inning. Could be the Astros decided that they would see a lot of breaking stuff here early, mm -hmm. given Max's success in game two with it. Braves with three on the left side of the infield. Freddie, the only man on the right side. Altuve at second. Brantley at first. Now a one two on the way. Got him swinging strike three. Slider low it in. That fans Carlos Correa and one down. First inning. Batting average against Max Freed was 287. That's 35 points higher than in any other inning. Wow. Similar first inning struggles to what we discussed with Ian Anderson. Exactly. Runners at first and second, one down. And Jordan Alvarez, the batter. Left-handed hitting DH. Had a very good postseason. First pitch of the count. Just low it inside, one ball on his right. Max was dominant in his final 12 starts of the regular season. Went seven and one with a 156 ERA in that span. Hoping to look more like that this evening. An infield single and an error put runners at first and second with a one down. 
1-0 pitch. Chopper right side. Ozzie gets to it on three bounces. Only plays at first base. Tosses that way. And they get the out. Runners advance to second and third. Brantley to second. Altuve to third. And now it's in the hands of Yuli Gurriel. One for two against him in game two. So was Tucker. Well, this is the AL batting champion climbing in for the runners at second and third and two down. Max brings it. There's a cold strike. Fastball 97. That base hit that Guriel had against Max, as I recall, was. Right off the end of the bat against the shift. Rolled into right field. He got Ozzie playing almost up the middle. He's still on the right side of the infield. So he strides to his right. Nothing in one. Freeze pitch. In for a strike again. Fastball right at the bottom of the zone. Might have gotten a break there. 97. Max got a little fired up after getting stepped on. Mm -hmm. No balls, two strikes, two down. Looking for a strikeout to finish him off here in the bottom of the first inning. No score in the bottom of one. Three to the belt. This will be his 15th pitch of the inning. Oh, two on the way. Check swing. Yeah. He went strike three. Yeah. Technically, Max got himself four outs that inning. But it keeps him off the board. And he works around the air in the unfortunate non-review at the back at first. No runs, one hit, one error, two left. We played one inning here in game six. We head to the top of the second, no score. Here at the top of the second inning, it's a scoreless ball game. That'll be Riley, Duvall, and Peterson for the Braves here at the top of the second. Garcia with a one, two, three first inning. The strikeouts of Freeman and Soler got Rosario to fly out. And I don't see it. Austin Riley's got up his sleeve here in the top of the second inning. Getting their second look at the right-hander Garcia here in this series. He was signed at 19 years old by the Astros for his $20,000. Now pitching in the World Series. There's the pitch on the way to Austin. Makes one a little bit too tall. Fastball 95. One ball, no strikes. I think we got a sample of Mike Kuczynski and his strike zone in the first inning. Mm -hmm. It's a much more generous strike zone than we've seen in this entire series from any of the other umpires. Here's the 1 0 pitch. Good swing. Found that one back. Right on it. Both pitchers coming out throwing lots of fastballs. Trying to establish that pitch early. Figure out where the strike zone is. And like you mentioned, it's a pretty deep zone, top to bottom. All to strike. Pitch on the way. A lunge and a miss. Strike two. This time he's shown the cutter. He made a couple of really nasty pitches to Soler and Freeman for those strikeouts. One two to Austin. Swing and a miss. Got him with a cutter. Went down with that pitch. Three straight strikeouts now for Garcia going back to the first inning. Adam Duvall can solve it. If this becomes a very low scoring game, Ben, I like the Braves' chances even more. I like it because they have the firepower with one swing of the bat, and proven in this World Series more so than the Astros. Mm -hmm. Pitch on the way. Adam takes a ball outside. First pitch slider. One ball, no strike. Braves have out homer them eight to two. And this is something that you and I were discussing earlier in the day. What happened in game five had not happened to the Braves since July the 16th, a game that they lost where they out homered their opponent. And going back to your point, you knock the ball out of the ballpark a few times. A lot more times than not, you're going to win that game, especially this bunch. 
There's the 1 0 pitch. Adam Roots one out to third. Back in stop. Back in the back by Bregman. Long throw and a good throw. He throws out Adam Duvall on a 5 3 ground out. Two up and two down here in the second. Here comes John Peterson. I got to tell you, folks. There was a show put on in one round of BP today, and that was by Jock and Eddie Rosario. They were peppering that second deck out in right field and well up into that upper tank. Pretty good time for one right now, what do you say? Yeah, but that was at 5.30. <laughs> See what he can do at 7.30 Central Time. Two down bases empty. No score here in the top of the second. Garcia steps once and twice in the pitch on the way. And that missed low. One ball, no strikes. Jock has had his best work off the bench. He's only two for 20 in the postseason, and he's 0 for his last 10. I'd say he's due for something really good. You bet. Ball and no strikes. Jock awaits on the pitch on the way. Slaps one high in the air. Shallow left coming in Michael Brandley. So is Jose Siri. This is in Brandley's neighborhood. And he catches that pop up the shallow left. Braves go down one, two, three in the top of the second. We enter the bottom of the second inning. No score in game six of the 2021 World Series. It is great to have you with us for Game 6 of the World Series here on the Fan 680 and 93.7 FM. And also for those of you streaming on the Fan app, wherever you may be, it is great to have you tuned in. Alongside Joe Simpson and our producer engineer, Jonathan Chadwick, Ben Ingram here with you. Scoreless game into the bottom of the second. Braves playing deeper into a season, deeper into a calendar than they ever have before. November baseball. Game six is taking place here on November the second. The deepest into a calendar either of these franchises have ever played. Astros never played past November the first. There's Kyle Tucker to lead it off. Left on left matchup. First pitch a little bit low. This with a slider, one ball, no strikes. This is the seventh World Series all time to carry into the month of November. Is it really? Uh huh. Huh. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Swing and a miss. The sinker, 1-1. One one. Okay, he's gotten the first inning out of the way. Hopefully he can settle in. Hopefully his ankle's okay. Already had one broken leg in this ballpark. Yeah, I think my biggest concern was it swelling up like Charlie's did. Yeah. From one inning to the next. Here's the 1-1 one pitch. In for a beautiful strike. That curveball was perfect. One and two on Tucker. Braves have done a great job against Kyle Tucker in this series. And as he came into the World Series with 15 RBIs in the postseason, he's still sitting on 15. One, two. Comebacker. Max can't get there. Charging in Dansby. Bare hands. Fires. And got him at first base. Nice play by Dansby. Able to sprint in right on the edge of the grass in front of second base. Bare hand and make the play. You see the same play made by third baseman all the time, having to charge a slow roller. Well, this time Dansby had to do it between the mound and second base. Great play, more soft contact. Well, so long as you're playing defense, you don't mind the soft contact. He was giving up rockets the last time he faced the Astros. At least there in that second inning. One down, base is empty for Bregman. No score. The pitch on the way. Just upstairs with the first pitch fastball. Bregman lifts one down the right field line, coming over Jock Peterson towards foul ground, and Jock makes the catch, straddling the line. But I'm telling you, there's not much room down there at all between the line and the stands. But just a few more feet over, that's probably a souvenir. Instead, it's an out and two quick ones. And you've got to stay with it. The way the wind's blowing out toward left, it might actually have some effect on some balls down the right field line.
Scott did a good job of going to the wall and then adjusting. Two down bases empty for Jose Siri, the number eight hitter in the order. Swings on the first pitch, fouls back to fastball, 0 to 1. First time we've seen Siri in a while. Remember, he got the start in game two. And went one for four with an RBI single and three strikeouts. A one to Siri. Hit in the air to left field. Coming in, Eddie Rosario. He's there. And Eddie squeezes it. Sounded like he broke his bat. And that died into the glove of Eddie Rosario. And down they go in order. At the bottom of the second inning. No runs hit your errors. None left. We head to the top of the third. No score in game six. Louisiana hot sauce. No scoring at the top of the third inning. Ben Joe and Jay Chad with you from Minute Maid Park in Houston. It's a perfect night, especially considering what time of the year it is. 72 degrees at the time of the first pitch. And the roof open for the second time in this series. You know what time it is? I'm going to guess it's time to go to the jar. It's time to go to that Oreo jar. Rally time. Put some runs on the board. Get the bottom part of the order going. That's going to be Ozzy leading it off. I like the 7-8-9 in a, yeah. an American League ballpark. Uh huh. Ozzy, Travis, and Dansby. 7-8-9 versus Garcia. Garcia's been sharp. He's throwing hard. He's locating that slider. He's getting strike one. Getting ahead in the count. I think the only guy who fell behind was uh, Riley. Dropped to seven in the order tonight. Remember, he was batting third. To get something going consistently at the plate. Here's the first pitch all the way from Garcia. And that comes from the back door. First pitch curveball, low at one. Braves have done a phenomenal job of not allowing one loss turn into two lately. Last time they lost consecutive games was 45 days ago. A one foul off, got a piece of it into the mid of Maldonado. Or tipped it, and 95 mile an hour fastball makes it nothing in two. Ozzy hitting 233 in the postseason. Here's the 0 2 on the way. A swing and a shot right in between the second baseman and shortstop, Altuve and Correa. And Ozzy beats the ship with a rocket in the right center field, a leadoff single. On an 0-2 count. He was a little late getting that front foot down on the pitch before, but not this one. Fastball out of third. Hit it hard. Good sign for Ozzy. How aggressive can he be on the base paths right here? As he wanted, as he wants to be. Maldonado is a great throwing catcher. He's got to get a good lead. No score, top of the third. Runner at first base for the Braves. No one out for Travis Darno. A couple of homers in this World Series. Steadies the bat. And the pitch from Garcia. Blow it outside, laid off a cutter. Braves looking to do something here tonight that has really been a trend in the World Series in recent years. No team has won the World Series in their home ballpark since 2013. And that's when the Red Sox beat the Cardinals at Fenway Park in Game 6. one -oh pitch. That's a smash down a left field line hooking foul. And it seeks down the left field line. One and one. We're finishing that thought. Here lately, good things have happened when you put on a great uniform in the World Series. Braves have played well on the road this postseason. Three and four. Almost two out of three in L.A. But split in Milwaukee. Split here. Ozzy lead at first. One ball and one strike. Travis awaits Garcia. Right-hander set of the belt. Pick off over the first base. Ozzy back in with a dive. 
I'd take a split here to this series right now as long as Braves win the first <laughs> yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah, let the Braves take today. You can have whatever you want tomorrow. Mm -hmm. All on a strike on Travis. Now two day, a few steps to his right. All on a strike. Ozzie not going. Pitch on the way. Splintered foul mm -hmm. on the screen. All on two strikes on Travis. Travis had a double off of this guy in Atlanta. One for two. Keep in mind, he only went three innings. Three and two thirds. But he was walking a bunch of guys that night. And they got their only run off of him in the third inning. One and two on Travis. Hands be swinging a stick in the on deck circle. Ozzy a lead at first. Here's the one two. Hit in the air towards right center field, angling back Siri. Now circles off behind it. He's under it, makes the catch, and one down here in the inning. This brings up Dansby Swanson. It was great to see what Dansby was able to do in Atlanta. Go back to game four. Had a home run to tie the game in the seventh inning. Prior to that, he had just one RBI in the postseason, so he needed that big base hit. He can set the table for the top of the order. Eddie Rosario in the on deck circle with the runner at first and one out. Pick off to first, Ozzie back in with a dive. Low throw taken by Yuli Guriel. Seventeenth edition of the World Series. And the Braves looking to win it for the first time since 1995. It'll also be their fourth in franchise history. Scoreless game at the top of the third. Ozzie picks up that lead again at first base. Garcia fires. Hands me a big swing and a miss. Cutter's been sharp from Garcia. A little hit and run. Right side wide open. Mm -hmm. well, two days taking a few more steps to his right. He's almost directly up the middle. Big hole on the right side of the infield. The call for again over the first base and Ozzy back with a dive. on his right shoulder. Nothing in one. There goes Ozzie. Pitch on the way. Swung on a fly ball to left. This one's carrying way back there to the warning track. That is going to be caught right at the wall by Michael Brandon. And Ozzie has to sprint back to the bag at first. He gets a little bit more on it. He bangs it off the wall of the Crawford boxes. Instead, it was caught right at the wall against the out-of-town scoreboard by Brandley. That was a shame. You only needed another foot or so to be out of his reach. It was a straight steal because Ozzie didn't take a look over his shoulder until after the ball, after contact had been made, and he could hear the crack of the bat. Well, Ozzie on the move there. If that hits the wall, Ozzie is at least a third. Yeah. Two down, back to the top of the order to Eddie Rosario. He gets a second look at Luis Garcia. Flew out to right field. Highlight real style play made by Tucker to get that first out back in the first inning. First pitch to Eddie. Off the plate with a changeup. Well, we talked about this in Atlanta and in game three that this guy has such an exaggerated rock the baby, step forward, step back, wind up, that he can't do that in the stretch. Mm -hmm. And so his, his rhythm, his mechanics are way different, a little bit tougher when he's out of the stretch. Ball, no strikes on Eddie. Pick off the first. Ozzie back with a dive. He's keeping a very close eye on Ozzie over there. You can't blame him. Pass 
Santos and Correa joining Altuve and Guriel on the right side. No score, top of the third. No time taken. Ozzie wants to step off the bag and get some of that dirt out from under his belt. Maybe catch his breath as he went hard back into the bag a moment ago. And he has had a legendary postseason to this point. He has been surging in the postseason for Atlanta. And looking for a surge out of Eddie tonight here in game six. As he again establishes his lead, one ball and no strikes. Garcia brings it. And he watches a change up low. Two balls and no strikes. Eddie has scored 10 runs in the postseason. He's driven in 11 runs. Two and zero on Eddie Rosario. Hitters count right here, looking for something he can drive. Two pitch inside. Three balls, no strikes. He draws a walk. Solaire would come to the plate with runners in first and second. A lot of confidence in Eddie Rosario and his eye, his ability to pick out a good pitch. I would not be surprised to see him swinging here 3 0. Lines into the back of the left hand batter's box. Only way to the bat over the plate. There's a hole through Garcia. Right hander comes out. As he gets his lead at first base. And a 3 0 pitch. Big swing and a miss. Went after a 3 0 changeup. Are you kidding me? How about that? Made a great pitch, three and two to Solaire with a slider that he took a little off of, fooled him. Now just a straight change would have been ball four. Three and one on Eddie. Offering on the way, Ozzy going. Pitch is ball four. Ozzy went in hard to second base with a head first slide, but he's there anyway. And with runners at first and second, and Solaire coming to the plate. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to Game 6 of the 2021 World Series on the Fan 680 and 93.7 FM. The only local call of the 2021 World Series is on WCNN North Atlanta on Dickey Broadcasting Station, The Fan. And stream it free on The Fan app. Top of the third, no score. Runners at first and second, two outs. And action going on down in the Astros' bullpen as they have left-hander Brooks Raley warming his arm. Braves got a leadoff single here in the inning from Ozzy Albies. Darno and Swanson both blew out, but Eddie Rosario able to draw a walk. And that puts runners in first and second for Jorge Soler. Strike out of this ball game. Per usual, facing a shift with three Astros on the left side. Ozzie at second, Eddie at first. There's the pitch. Going outside, laid off the cutter. So far, so good. Just doubled up on the Oreos. This is looking. And a clutch two out base hit. Braves have eight two out RBIs this series. Here's the 1 0 pitch. Big swing and a miss. Doubled up on a cutter. That time got to be chased after it. 1 and 1.
No runs, one hit, one error for the Braves. No runs, one hit, no errors for the Astros. Jorge waiting on the 1-1 as Garcia comes out. Runners take their leads, 1-1 on the way. Lays off a high fastball, 2-1. Maldonado wanted that, but he came up out of his crouch. He may have blocked the umpire's view of it a little bit. Also joining Rayleigh Masters bullpen now, Christian Javier. Two balls and one strike on Jorge Soler. the 2 1 pitch. Check swing. They appeal. Didn't go. 3 and 1 as they check with Chris Conroy down at first base. Very good patient by the Braves hitters here in the third inning. The patience out of Ozzie and Rosario. And I know Jorge Soler displaying that same patience. Got to be mighty strong to stop that swing. So now then, what's he throw here? 3 and 1. On 3 0 change up, 3 2 sliders. Seems like versus righties, that cutter might be the thing that he's got the most confidence in. We're about to find out. 3 1 pitch. In for a strike with a slider. Front door. Corey thought that was a tad low instead of 3 2 count with two down. Well, again, a little more generous strike zone tonight. Rosario and Albies will get a head start here. Three and two with two down. Very bold pitch there to come in with a slider on, on Soler. Everyone standing, waving the orange towels. Garcia comes set of the belt. Runners go. Three, two. Line down the left field line of foul ball. Turned on a slider. Side of the chalk line by a few feet down the left field line. Do it again with a 3 2 count. Got an action count right here. Three balls, two strikes, two down. Runners at first and second. And the Braves are going to score the game first run with a base hit right here. 3 2 pitch. Another foul ball down the left field line. Turned on the fastball. Big Jorge just calmly walks around outside the batter's circle. Tough spot for Garcia, man. Got runners on base. He knows if he doesn't retire Soler, he's out of the ball game. Mm -hmm. And if he walks in, he's out of the ball game. Pulls out a scouting report from his back left pocket. Gives it a glance. Three balls, two strikes, two down. Huge moment in this ball game early. No score for now on the top of the third inning. That could change with a crank of the bat. Ozzie and Eddie take their leads. They're about to run. There they go. Pitch on the way. He attacks and smokes one to deep left. This one's going supersonic. That is out of the ballpark. Whoa! Over the train tracks, it's 3 0 Atlanta. And Jorge Soler lands the first punch here in the top of the third inning. What a display of strength! That cleared the tracks by a mile. Dusty Baker showed in the dugout, pumping his arm like he wished he had taken him out. A hitter early east of the mound to get Garcia. Now it's too late. Jorge dropped the bat, turned to his dugout, pounded on his chest, went into his trot. You can take all the time you want when you do that to a baseball. 
Crawford Street's outside the ballpark, and it had to have cleared Crawford Street. That went an estimated 446 feet and came oh. off his bat at 110. Get another, get another measuring stick, folks. <laughs> All right, Astros go to the bullpen. We'll step aside. Base is empty. Two down, three nothing Atlanta. You're listening to game six on the fan 680 and 93.7 FM. Three to nothing Atlanta. How's that sound? Hello, double stuff. Brooks Raley. In the pitch, he did not pitch in game five, but he did pitch in game four. He went a third of an inning, and gave up a hit and a run and a walk. He has not pitched well in the postseason overall. Seven games, no record, a 7 11 ERA. Six and a third innings. He's given up five runs, three walks, four strikeouts. He is a lefty. And with two out, he'll face Freddie Freeman. Well, there are home runs, and there's that. That's one of the most impressive homers I think I've ever seen. That, that was a lightning bolt. Freddie swings at the first pitch, and a ground ball out the second, charging the second baseman Jose Altuve. His throw over, it's close. Freddie beats it out. And Rayleigh needs one pitch to get the final out at the top of the third inning, but the Braves get three runs with a homer by Jorge Soler. Three runs, two hits, no errors, none left. We head to the bottom of the third inning, 3 0 Atlanta. 3-0 Braves as we enter the bottom of the third inning. It'll be 9-1-2 and two for Houston. Jorge Soler with a three-run home at the top of the inning, and Joe put himself on a pretty exclusive list, didn't he? Not too many guys on a list of Braves that have hit three home runs in a World Series. Hank Aaron did it back in 1957. Lonnie Smith did it in 1991. And Ryan Klesko did it in 1995. But, well... When that ball comes back around the earth, <laughs> we're, we're going to really get a good look at it. Yeah, we are. Because it got out of here in a hurry. Now that's going to be coming through the opening of the roof down the right field line any second now. And this went up over the train tracks and out of the ballpark. Martin Maldonado leading it off. guy was so frustrating in those ball games in Atlanta, especially in game five. He had three RBIs in that ball game. Hitting just 114 in the postseason. Max Freed goes to work. First pitch swinging, 0 and 1. Three runs, two hits, one error for the Braves. No runs, one hit, no errors for the Astros. He's got to feel good with a 3 0 lead. A one for Max. Outside, this with a sinker. Let's go, Max, go to work now. He's already set down six in a row since that error was charged. 1 1 pitch. Third ball this time, two and one. This is Max's ninth career postseason start, and that is the fifth most in franchise history, trailing only Tom Glavin, John Smoltz, Greg Maddox, and Steve Avery. Max hoping for his most important postseason start tonight. Two one pitch. Not low three and one. Nine hole hitter. Come on. Quit messing around. Make him swing it. For Maldonado, it's Altuve in the top of their order. 3-1 from three. There's a strike. Do it again. Going outside corner. Yeah, it took a little off. 92. Batting practice fastball. Do it again. Maldonado was taken the other night against Minter with the bases loaded. He didn't want to swing the bat and do a walk. 3-2 pitch. Stroke in the air to center field down for a base hit. The ball cuts it off. Now Bobbles momentarily sends it in. A leadoff single for Martin Maldonado. All right, but it wasn't a walk. What's not right about it is he had to go to a 3 2 count on him, falling behind. Be more aggressive. This is Altuve here. Altuve single in the first inning was left stranded. 
There's repeating for those of you just joining us that in the series coming into tonight's game, they have 11 men lead off an inning and reach, and eight have scored. They definitely made it count. Max brings the first pitch. That's spoiled foul. Freeman comes over, gives a look that hits the screen. About one section down of the Astros dugout. Oh, and one and out two days. Blades leading 3-0 here in the bottom of the third inning. That was the ninth home run the Braves had hit this postseason, or rather uh, this World Series, I should say. Oh, no one count on Altuve. Lefty brings it. High fly ball to deep center, but not deep enough for the Astros. Not peddling the ball. Way back there, he's under it. Makes the catch out in center field. One down. It is 409 to straightaway center. Adam was probably 20 feet from the warning track there. A very deep center field. Anything to straightaway center, you really got to tag it to get it out of here. Down for Michael Bradley, runner at first. Bradley reached on that error back in the first inning. But Max Freed had his ankle stepped on. Seemed to be unfazed. Still out there, obviously. Here's the first pitch on the way to Brantley. Broken bad chopper. Max has got it. Turns, fires to second. There's one. Dansby to first. Freddy on a tiptoe. Double play. 1 6 3. And that puts him away in the bottom of the third inning. Waves out to a really good start. At the top of the fourth inning, it'll be Riley, Duvall, and Peterson. We'll see what the middle of the order can do. 3 0 Atlanta. We go to the fourth inning. Braves up 3 0 on the home run by Jorge Soler, that's somewhere in downtown Houston. Christian Javier has been summoned from the bullpen, the third pitcher already for Houston. This guy's got nasty stuff, but in game four, it wasn't nasty enough. He gave up back to back home runs. To Dansby Swanson and Jorge Soler. That was the difference in the ball game in the seventh inning. The Braves went on to win three to two. For the entire postseason, Javier's been in five games, nine and a third innings. Those were the first runs he had allowed. Six hits, the two homers, five walks, and in nine and a third innings, he struck out 16. And he will face Austin Riley to start the fourth. Going back to those two home runs that he gave up. I mean, the one that Dansby hit, 95 mile an hour fastball went the opposite way with it. And it, it we, we've said it a hundred times this season. Every time Dansby starts going, he, he does it with something like that to right center, and he did. And then Solaire digs in there, and you're thinking, I right, just tied up the ball game. Let's see if he can find a way to score another one. Here comes another homer. Yeah, on a slider, on a slider, and, and against a guy that had not been giving up much of anything. Anything, yeah. I, I really like add on runs, so <laughs> over the jar. <laughs> the fourth inning has been a good one for the Braves here in the postseason. There's a called strike. They've had some huge fourth innings in this 2021 postseason. Three nothing Braves, top of the fourth. Nothing and one on Austin Riley, who's over one with a strikeout. Austin with a good swing, but fouls it back into the screen. So Lair took a lot of buzz out of the crowd in game one when he hit the third pitch of the World Series in the Crawford boxes. Go to the Riley is upstairs one and two. He's done the same thing tonight and then if they had any buzz left in him at one four three double play took the rest out of him. Yeah. Was it one four three or one, one six three? three six three. One two to Austin. And he's off a slider away two and two. Well, he hit the grand slam the other night of the first inning. But you didn't have the pitching available for that ball game that you do tonight. Correct. And it's a 3 0 lead here early. 2 2, swung on miss. Came through the front door of the slider. Max through three innings. Has faced 11 batters. He's given up a couple of singles. Only one was hit hard, the other one on the infield. 
no walks, two strikeouts, but I think that's second to last stat, the no walks is the biggest difference. And what we saw the other night versus this evening. Adam you all over one with a ground out. And a sharp grounder to third baseman Alex Bregman made a nice play back in the second inning. First pitch slider right across the inside corner. 0 1. It looks more like a curveball. It's got a lot of downward tilt. Mm -hmm. A little slower. Came through at 81. Yeah, that'd be a little bit slow for a slider. 0 1 pitch. High fly ball deep down the left field line towards the foul pole. That is a foul ball. Looks like he got dropped out of an airplane. Landed about six, maybe seven seats to the foul side of the pole down the left field line. Nothing in two on the ball. Three nothing Braves, top of the fourth inning here in game six of the 2021 World Series. Two pitch way outside. Wait for the fastball away, one and two. And has driven in ten runs this postseason, four of them on a grand slam the other night. One two pitch. Swings it a fly ball to center. Jose Siri over to his left, calling off Kyle Tucker. Right center field, he makes the catch. Two outs here in the fourth. It'll be up to Jock Peterson now to keep it alive. Braves had a leadoff single in the third, but then back to back flyouts from Dardo and Swanson. Looked like they weren't going anywhere there in the third inning. But then a two out walk, but runners at first and second. And then Jorge Soler put one into orbit. Like you said, knocked it out of the ballpark, completely out of the park. Wide on left matchup. That takes the ball high. You know, the, the Latin players speaking Spanish about home runs they used to have and probably still do a term like calle, which I believe means out in the street. <laughs> and he just went Kalakaye. He did. What a job that's in for a strike. Here's the thing. If they have the roof closed, it might have broken the glass up there. Yeah. And still gone Kalakaye. Is that right? Yeah. One and one on Jock. Not eight deers. He was a called strike. Jock Peters. Astros will have three, four, five to you up at the bottom of the fourth inning. Blades leading three nothing. One two pitch. Check swing or pitch outside. They appeal. Tom Hallion spreads the wings down the third base line. Didn't go on a two two count. Is 2 2. Right hander Javier kicks and fires. Swing of this for strike three. Slider down. Jock swing over the top of it. Braves go down in order for the third time in four innings. Astros up Correa, Alvarez, and Guriel do up when we come back. We head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Braves three. Astros nothing. Bottom of the fourth inning in Houston. It's a 3 0 lead for the Braves. Max Breed. Has faced 11 batters at this point, giving up a couple of singles. That's been it. Carlos Correa leads it off. Max was taken seventh overall in the 2012 draft. The man that was taken number one overall is this man right here, Carlos Correa. Houston had the number one pick that year. Contres were drafting seventh. They drafted Max Freed and then traded into the Braves in December of 2014. Top 10 picks from that 2012 draft right here. There's the pitch on the way from Max to Korea. Fastball call strike. 32 pitches through the first three innings. Very manageable. Excellent pace. 
the one pitch. A little bit low with the changeup. That first pitch that he threw to Correa to get ahead, nothing and one. That's the key right there, especially against right-handed batters. Yep. It was a perfect fastball. Right over the outside corner. Here's his 1-1 one -one pitch. Swing and a miss. Change up. Beauty. Correa 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Reed fanned him in the first inning. Two pitch. Brown ball chopper out to Riley. That's a fair ball. Now that's a foul. Tom Halligan was waiting on home plate on our Mike Wetlinski because it's his call to the cross in the bag. And then Riley had it in the glove and then they both threw up their hands. Three-nothing Atlanta. Bottom of the fourth. Bases in as Correa leads off the bottom of the inning. Looking in, swivels and fires his one two. Blow it inside of the slider, he can count two and two. And it's Correa, Alvarez, and Guriel, whom three retired in order after allowing two men on base to lead off the first inning. 2 2 pitch. Broken bat up the center field, coming on Adam Duval. He can't get there. He'll land in front of him. Just flared it into right center. More soft contact. Good pitch. Broken bat player. Just saw a note on Max Friedman giving a three run lead in his career. He's 39 and 3, 15 and 1 this year. I like those numbers. This is a very potent lineup. But he still has to execute. Allows the leadoff man on here in the fourth inning. This is the third time they've gotten the leadoff man on. Jordan Alvarez over one with a ground out. Ground ball off the mound. Ozzy's got it. Flip to Dansby. There's one. Dansby swivels and fires. And that is another double play. Hello. That was beautiful. Ozzy had to go hard to his right. I think for a moment he thought about a glove flip. But realized he had time. I think you're right. And then he had time to get a good one to Dansby. And Dansby had time to square up the shoulders and get rid of it. You know, a 4-6-3 double play. Two down here's Julie Guriel. Well, especially in this part of the order to get double plays is huge. Three nothing Braves. Two down bases empty. The pitch to Guriel. Ground ball out to Ozzy. To his left. He scoops it up. Heels on the grass of right field. Throws over. And there's out number three. Great job by Max. Gave up that broken bat player. And then just a few pitches later, he's out of the inning. Braves in the fifth will have 7 8 9 coming up. We end that way with the Braves on top, 3 to nothing. So Javier out there on the mound for the Astros. We head to the top of the fifth inning. Braves 3, Astros nothing. It will be 7 8 9 you up in the Braves here in the fifth. And that's part of the order that was up in the third inning when they scored three times, Joe. And it all started with that base hit from Ozzy. Yeah, and it, on an 0-2 count, that's that was something because Ozzy cut down on his swing a little bit, made an adjustment. It's hoping to lead it off with another one right here. Astro shifted against him back in the third inning, and they do the same thing right here. It's the first pitch on the way to Ozzy, in for a high strike. You know, a fastball of the outside corner, right at the top of the zone. Ozzy just shakes his head, thinking maybe that's a strike to Jorge Soler. I'm thinking one on Ozzy. Oh, one pitch. Just low. This is game six, and with what you've seen out of Mike Wichlinski's strike zone, would you say this is the best one we've seen? No doubt. No doubt by a long shot. He's not making the pitchers throw it through a keyhole. Mm -hmm. All on a strike. Ozzy takes ball outside. 
little bit high. Miss with that slider. Waits on the 2 1. Javier brings it. Ozzy swings to the roller foul at the first base line. Two balls, two strikes on Ozzy. You're just now tuning in. The Braves had a three run home run from Jorge Soler in the third inning. And that's how we've arrived at this 3 0 score here at the top of the fifth. Couple balls, couple strikes. Ozzy awaits as Javier looks into his catcher, Maldonado. Brings the 2 2, and Ozzy lifts one foul back over the Braves' dugout. That'll land about a dozen rows back. You know, Ben, it's hard to make more out of a home run than it is. I mean, just think about Duvall's grand slam. That was in the first inning. It wasn't enough. But the way Soler hit that ball, and on a full count, with two out, to hit it as far as he did, as hard as he did, man, oh, man, that makes an impression. 2-2. Two -two. Just outside. And furthermore, Joe, in this ballpark, was like you mentioned earlier, that, that immediately silenced everyone. Mm -hmm. Set a tone for the road team. Two count on Ozzy Albies. Right hander fires. Ozzy takes ball four high. There we go. Second walk of the ball game by an Astro pitcher. The other Eddie Rosario in the third inning, and he was standing at first when Jorge Soler hit one into another county. That'll bring Travis up to the plate. For one with a fly out to center field. Southpaw Blake Taylor now up and tossing in the Astros bullpen. Yeah, they got everybody out there tonight, and rightfully so. There is no tomorrow for the Astros. They've got to use everybody. Ball strike on a front door slider. Dusty Baker could change pitchers every hitter he would. Yeah. And has in the past, but. Right. Well, there's a rule change now. You got to face three guys. And he's got Johnny Holstaff tonight. This is his third pitcher already. We're in the top of the fifth. Nothing going to want on Travis Darno. Pitch from Javier misses high. This is the second time the Braves have had the leadoff man on, and both times it's been Ozzy Albies. Really, no matter what happens the rest of the ball game, moving him down has helped him in this ball game. Travis stares at a 1-1 count. Here comes the pitch. Three-quarter swing, he went. Just a fastball up at end and a 1-2 count. This guy's a four-pitch pitcher. Fastball in the mid-90s, but he's also got a curve slider and changeup. Now it comes out of the bullpen. It's like facing another starting pitcher. Isn't right. It? One two count on Darno. Pick off over to first base. Ozzy back in with a dive. Three nothing Atlanta. Top of the fifth. Travis steadies the bat. Awaits his one two. Here's the pitch. That's off the mid of Maldonado into the backstop and down the second base for Ozzy. That'll be a wild pitch to advance Ozzy down to second. You get a leadoff walk and a wild pitch, you feel like they're giving you a run. Now, it ought to be a run. At this level, it ought to be a run. I know it's a two and two count to Travis. That makes it a little harder to move that runner over. Maldonado's no, no short guy, and he's got long arms, and he still couldn't haul that one in. Two on two. Two and two on Travis. He's trying to get the ball to the right side of the Vance Ozzie. Yeah, and typically with two strikes, the manager would tell you, just swing away, drive him in. But I'll bet Travis will still try to get him over. Here's his 2 2. Fouled off into the screen. Had the right approach there, didn't he? Yeah, he's diving in. Trying to make sure he had the plate covered.
Base hit could make it 4 0. No one out, runner at second, and a 2 2 count on Travis Darno. Javier to the plate. Swing and a miss. Went down with a fastball. One down that brings Dansby Swanson up to the plate. He'll be followed by the top of the order. Dansby flew out to left. Hit the ball pretty deep. It's the first pitch low and outside. He sent Michael Brandley back to the wall. And the third inning. Uh, Brandley made the catch right up against the out-of-town scoreboard. Yeah, he could have changed the, the score out there on the line score if he wanted. By the way, how's that game in, in Philadelphia? Oh, never mind. <laughs> Only one score up there tonight. Yep. Ball to strike on Dansby. Javier's offering. Up and in. Two balls, no strikes. Maldonado, I, I like the way he does things. When he's trying to get the pitcher's attention if they're off the mark and missing, falling behind, he'll lift up his mask and glare at him before he throws the ball back like, let's go. Two and oh on Dansby. Tube plays him right up the middle. Ozzy a lead at second. 2-0 pitch. Swung on this. Came through the front door with a slider, but I think that drifted a little bit more than he wanted it to. And it came over the middle of the plate. Dansby would love to have that back. Slider this time over the outer third. Dansby's come up empty at the last two sliders he's seen, and I'm guessing you'll see another one right here. Maybe even one a little farther off the plate. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Ozzy out at second base looking for a lift home. 2-2 to Dansby. Now that one off. Did throw another slider. Dansby waited just an extra beat on it. Got a piece of it. Maybe he's on it right now. When a guy takes a good cut and barely misses your slider, sometimes that makes you want to go to something else. One out runner at second. 3-0 Atlanta. Top of the fifth. This will be the sixth pitch of this sequence. There's the 2-2 pitch. Dansby a rope to deep left field. That one's rising. Kiss it goodbye. A two-run bomb by Dansby. And it's 5-0 Atlanta on the strength of two tape measure shots. One from Ore, one from Dansby. And those are the two men who hit the big home runs the other night. Guess what? He went to something else. He went to the fastball. And Dansby, we know, can hit a fastball. Here comes Dusty. Five to nothing, Atlanta. Half the team out there on the field giving high fives to Dansby. And that'll be it for Javier. Dansby owns Javier. He's bombed him the last two times he's faced him. It's a good point. I'd forgotten about that. Yeah. So 5 0 Atlanta. Base is empty. One down. Tell you about the new hurler when we come back. You're listening to Game 6 of the World Series on the Fan 680 and 93.7 FM. Fifth inning. Tiana Hot Sauce. 
Joe Ben and Jay Chad back with you. 5 0 Atlanta. We're in the top half of the fifth inning. Dansby Swanson's just gone deep, deep into the Crawford boxes in left field. Blake Taylor will now come on. He's one of the least used relievers for Dusty Baker and the Astros. This is only his fourth game in the entire postseason. Three innings, three hits. He hasn't given up a run. He's only walked one. He struck out five, and he will face Rosario, Soler, and Freeman if they can get somebody on. There's only one out in the inning. I like. I kind of like this Soler Swanson thing that's going on. Yeah, not bad, right? Yep. Yeah, they saw Javier out there on the mound, and it was a race to the bat rack at that point. Back to the top of the order to Eddie Rosario. 0 for 1 with a walk. Also scored a run. Braves 5, Astros nothing. Top of the fifth. Looking at a shot of the dugout right now. Tell you more about that thought in just a minute. Left on left matchup and the pitch on the way from Taylor. Strike call. Everyone's stirring down there in the dugout. High five, smiles, with the exception of one person. Max Freed. As stone faced as ever, just staring a hole through the screen of the uh, dugout right in front of him. Pitch outside, one and one. Yeah. And there's nothing real giddy about it either from anybody down there because they remember what happened in game five with a big early lead. Mm -hmm. Strike on Eddie. Lefty Taylor brings it. Rosario takes a strike. We've seen some video from the battery in Truist Field. We heard some 18,000 tickets were sold for the watch party inside the park. The battery is hopping. I know the fans watching on the big screen back there are fired up. Here's the one two pitch. There's a comebacker back to Taylor, taking on two soft hops. Goes over to first base and two down. And now Solaire will dig back in. Just hit an absolute rocket out of here a moment ago. They say it went 446 feet. I'd say that plus about another 50 feet is what it looked like. Well, it's probably 446 before it disappeared, you know? Yeah. From where they can actually measure it. But they don't have measuring sticks outside a stadium. <laughs> it's ball inside. They had that big light standard on top of the railroad track and left, and it was halfway up the light standard, whizzing right on by the 2019 AL championship pennant when it flew out of here. 1-0 pitch up and in. I'm not going to write that number in my book. I'm going to write it like 450 plus. Yeah. Because then we'll know. And that's a lot more accurate. Five nothing Braves, top of the fifth. 2-0 to Solaire. Inside, just about caught him in the hands. That's two they crowded him with. Rio pitch. Takes ball four. Two out walk and he's on base for the second time. Braves have turned the first two walks they were given into runs. Rosario in the third and Albies earlier this inning. And here's Freddy with a runner at first and two down. Here, Fred E. Champ. He gets drowned out by Booz. Freddy takes a ball outside. Well, Christian Javier was a four pitch guy. Taylor's more two pitch. Fastball 94 to 95 with a slider. One out to Freddy. He barrels one to deep left. That's slicing down the line, and that's a foul ball. 
One and one on Freddie. Max Freed in the bottom of the inning will face six, seven, and eight. Tucker Bregman Siri. Now the Braves have given him two more runs of support here in the top of the fifth inning. And a five nothing lead. See what Freddie can do with two downs. Staring at a one one count. He's a left hander Taylor. So Lara lead at first. Pitch to Freddie. Low and outside. Tied three and one. Tell you what, the Braves have really seen some favorable counts tonight. You know, and going back to what we've been saying about Muchlinski, the home plate umpire, you really got to be missing. Yeah. You're will, really well off the plate or too high in the zone to get a ball call. 3 1, and this is hit to deep left center field back there towards the corner. Going Siri, and that's off the wall. Playing it off the wall now, the left footer Brandley. Rounding third, heading for the plate. Solaire, make it 6 0. RBI double, Freddie Freeman. That stayed in the air forever, sailing and sailing over the head of Siri and off the wall where it says 366 on the left center field wall. Here come the Fred E chance again. Slider that was just a spinner up and away, and Freddie took it the other way. And it, like you said, it just missed the yellow line out there right above the Braves' bullpen. And Solaire with two out running on the crack of the bat scored easily. Tenth RBI of the postseason for Freddie Freeman. Just missed his fifth home run this postseason. He's had on Oreos are awesome. <laughs> That's going to be the end of the night for Taylor. They're going to go deeper into the bullpen. Braves have a runner at second. Two down. It's a 6-0 lead for Atlanta here in Game 6. We'll step aside. You're listening to Game 6 of the World Series on the Fan 680 and 93.7 FM. Bill Maton, the next man to pitch for the Astros tonight. He will be their sixth pitcher already. Make it their fifth, fifth pitcher tonight. And he has worked a lot. He's now tied with Brian Stanek for the most appearances in the postseason for Houston. He has no wins or losses in 082 ERA. 11 innings. He's allowed one run on a homer. Three walks, 13 strikeouts, and he was outstanding in game five. He worked two innings. They really needed him. After the Braves had jumped out to that early lead, he helped hold the Braves off. Two innings, two hits, no runs or walks, struck out three. 6 nothing Braves. Runner at second, two down. Austin Riley is 0 for 2. He's trying to get in on the action. A couple of strikeouts for Austin tonight. Right-hander Maton comes set right at the belt. Rares back and fires his first pitch. Right call. Fastball 92 off the outside corner. Right, he'll be running on contact with two down. He takes his lead at second. A one pitch to Riley. Right call again. But gave him an inch or so off the outside corner. Nothing in two. Braves got three in the third. They've scored three more here in the fifth. Two to Riley. Laid off. Went fastball up. One ball, two strikes. Braves have out homer the Astros 10 to 2 in this series. And it's two more tonight. One, two to Riley. Didn't go after that slider away, and that evens up the count two and two. Aton's got that look on his face like he had earlier in the series, like he just got back from Atlanta, got to town yesterday, and got some bad chili. (laughs) 
Got a good arm, but it's got to be getting a little weary right now. 2-2, two -two, hit in the air towards deep center field. Sprinting back there, Siri. Still back at the warning track and an over-shoulder catch right in front of the Astros' bullpen on a deep right center field. On some ballparks, this got a shot to get out. Not here. And that ends the top of the fifth inning. But the Braves pick up three runs. An RBI double from Freeman, a two-run home run from Swanson. Two hits, no errors, and one left. We head to the bottom of the fifth inning with the Braves leading the Astros 6 to nothing. 6-0 Braves into the bottom of the fifth inning. Before action gets going, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Fan 680 and 93.7 FM. The only local call of the 2021 World Series is on WCNN North Atlanta on Dickey Broadcasting Station, The Fan, and stream it free on The Fan app. Well, so far, Max Freed has taken care of business, and his team has given him a six-run lead into the bottom of the fifth. Astros have gotten the leadoff man on three times in four innings, but no runs yet. All right, it'll be Tucker, Bregman, and Siri for Houston near the bottom of the fifth. First pitch, check Swain, called strike. Six runs, four hits, one error for the Braves. Two of those four hits, home runs. No runs, three hits, no errors for Houston. A one for Max, swing and a miss. Couple of sinkers located perfectly. Way ahead of Tucker, nothing in two. And Max can't get his foot back on the rubber fast enough. I remember the last time we said that. Oh, two on the way. Bounced up there. He threw two shutouts late in the season, and both times, as soon as he got the ball back, he couldn't wait to throw it again. Right. He was locked in. Shut out Baltimore in August and then San Diego in September. Big reason he was named pitcher of the month in September in the National League. One, two. Have a seat. Swung on, missed. Went after a changeup down. He also threw six innings of shutout ball against Milwaukee in game two of the division series and struck out nine. Didn't walk anybody. Then ran into a couple of bad starts against the Dodgers and Houston. But honestly, that last time out against Houston, the soft contact and the error, the throwing error by Rosario really just did him in. Mm -hmm. He was fine after that. And he's thrown 44 pitches tonight, 31 strikes. First pitch to Bregman. A lunge and a miss after a first pitch curveball. He hadn't used his curveball much tonight. A one from Max. Curveball a little bit low. One ball, one strike. Bregman awaits the one one. Sends one foul into the screen. Hacked at a changeup at a one two count. Texas sky. A roof open here in Houston. 6 nothing Braves here in game six. And a 1-2 on the way to Bregman. Just low of the fastball. Max kind of bouncing around out there on his follow-through like, all right, let's kind of calm down here. Left-hander looks in, swivels and fires his 2-2 to Bregman. This low again, this time with a slider. Runs the count full on Alex Bregman. It's just like they had bat to Maldonado earlier tonight. Don't walk him if he gets a base hit. So be it. 3-2 pitch. Strike three, got him looking. Fastball paint at the bottom of the zone. I mean, right at the bottom of the zone. That one got the attention of the Houston dugout. They did not like that call. Wyslinski's been calling it a strike tonight. Two down for Jose Siri. Max searching for his second one, two, three inning. Fires in a slider for a called strike. I feel like he's been automatic here lately with these first pitch strikes. Beautiful thing. 
and doing it with everything in his arsenal. 6 nothing Braves, bottom of the fifth. Base is empty, two down. A one to Siri. Fly ball to right. Jock Peterson looking up, now drifting back. He's under it, and Jock's got it. Three up and three down. They go quietly in the bottom of the fifth inning. Braves in the sixth. We'll have Duvall, Peterson, and Albies. It's a 6 nothing lead for Atlanta. By Louisiana Hot Sauce. Top of the sixth inning is still Maytown out there for the Astros. He'll be facing Duvall, Peterson, and Albies. That's five, six, and seven in the Braves order. Braves on top, six nothing. As we head into the top of the sixth inning, the carriers to the next inning. Here's Joe. Thanks, Ben. And while I'm doing this, if you wouldn't mind running to the kitchen and finding a brown bag for Jonathan to breathe in, I, I know would, it. That would be beneficial to both of us. We do not need our producer engineer to pass out back there from deep breathing, hyperventilating. Just so you folks at home, especially his girlfriend, Margaret Ann, we want you to know we do have paddles on standby, too, in case. <laughs> Clear. Yeah. Duval is grounded out and flied out. Maton works out of the stretch. Shift on the pitch. Foul down the right field line off the screen. Braves got three in the third on a two out. 3 2 pitch home run by Jorge Soler that went out of the stadium. They got three more in the fifth. Two run homer by Swanson into the Crawford boxes. And a two out RBI double by Freddie after Soler had walked. Pitch to Duvall. Lays off a slider outside. One and one. I don't know Phil Maton. I've not watched him pitch until this postseason. He came over from the Indians to Houston. But, man, this guy's either got a rubber arm or he's got to be getting tired. The 1-1 one -one to Duvall. Slider missed. Two and one. Town takes a deep breath. Much like our producer engineer blows it out. And gets the sign for Maldonado. Two and one to count. The ball waits and the pitch. And there for a call strike. So this will be what? His fifth appearance in the last eight days? Yeah. And they're wearing the tread off of him. But it's that kind of a situation for Houston. Yeah, think. they got no choice. And he had to work two innings two days ago. Two and two. Time called by the catcher. Altuve more or less behind second base out on the outfield grass. Correa on the outfield grass. Pulled around for Duvall. Bregman near the line at third. Out pretty much straight away. The pitch laid off another breaking pitch. Full count. Braves have received three walks tonight, and they've all scored. How about that, Ben? That's what you're looking for. Yeah, it is. Make them pay. Payoff pitch to Duvall on the way. Swung on, hit off the end of the bat, squib to the right side. That'll get through for a base hit. Altuve chased it, but he couldn't get to it. That ball looked like it was cued so badly that it was actually spinning away from Altuve. There's some soft contact for Atlanta for a base hit. Duvall's one for three. Leadoff man on. <laughs> Duvall gives that chop sign to the bench like, Really? Okay. <laughs> There's English all over that thing. It's almost like that ball had legs left, right, <laughs> yeah. left, right. Yeah. Just a little bit softer hit than that grand slam. Jock Peterson's due. He's over his last 12. Tonight he's flied out and struck out. They shift on him to the right. Throw to first. The ball 
just fell down and was right on top of the bag. Got a number for you on those walks. Okay. Three walks tonight, three runs scored. In the first five games of this series, the Braves had drawn 15 walks. Three of those 15 had scored. Wow. So they've scored as many on the walks tonight as they had in the previous five games combined. Making them pay off. Walks a rally. Time called as Maton was about to deliver. Shot called timeout on that one. But see, that's what I'm talking about with Braves pitchers. You, you just can't put extra men on base. Uh -huh. There's too much danger of a big inning being created by that. The ball leads from first, nobody out. And the pitch to Jock, swung on, lifted in the air to right field, but not that deep. Tucker is under it, he waits for it, and he's got it. In straightaway right field. The ball back to first, one out. And to back your point, it doesn't matter how many outs there are when a walk takes place. Of these three walks tonight, two took place with two down. Mm -hmm. And in the postseason, as you said, a walk's a rally. Well, if it's uh, June 12th, you know, the second game of a series against somebody, and you walk the leadoff man, it, and nobody thinks twice about it. Right. Not in the postseason. Here's Ozzy. He is single, walked, scored twice. Swings and lines one to right field, a base hit on the first pitch. He's two for two. So moving out of the three hole has been a great move tonight for Atlanta. As Ozzy's batting in the seventh spot, he's two for two. And that puts runners at first and second with one out. And Travis Starno, the hitter. That might be the best swing Ozzy's had the whole series. I think so. Came off his bat at 95 miles an hour. And that's really what's been missing for him is the contact that he's made. It's not been hard contact until tonight. Right. Timing is all off. Darno has flied out, struck out. A little chop going on that makes the natives restless. And the pitch, swing and a miss. Up and in. Fastball at 92. A lot of Braves fans right behind their dugout. Doing the chop and the chant. I bet they are at Truist Park and in the battery, too. Time called by Maldonado. Six to nothing, Atlanta on top. We're in the sixth inning. The pitch way outside. Anton and that slider not nearly as sharp tonight as you might expect after this much work. Brian Stanek, the next man up in the Astros bullpen. Duvall at second, Ozzy at first. One out, the 1 1. Swung on, lifted in the air, down the right field line. That'll twist Fallon out of play. Fans trying to get something going to try to help the pitcher out. Now that he's got a one and two count, but even that's a little subdued. A one two. Swung on and missed. They get Duvall for the second time tonight. He's 0 for 3. Span twice. That's all right. You just keep calling the right pitches, Travis. Dansby Swanson hit a two run homer his last time up. That was against Javier. Second time he had homered against him in his many trips to the plate. Dating back to game four, as Ben pointed out. Dansby now four for 18 in the series. And the pitch to him, slider missed, ball one. Six runs on only six hits for the Braves. Like I said, those walks have really been cashed in. They've made an error. 
No runs, three hits, no errors for the Astros. Maton ready. Kicks, fires. Slider missed again outside. 2 0. Doing all right, Jonathan? <laughs> no. Said no. More choppers break out here. And the fans trying to boo them down. The 2 0 pitch. Swung on, hit hard. A one hopper to Correa. He'll go to second. No. He goes to first, but in time to get the out. He was not going to get Ozzy at second, and he double pumped. Still made the throw to first in time to end the inning. No runs, two hits, two left. We played five and a half innings. Go to the bottom of the six. Braves up six nothing. Nine one two do up for the Astros as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Max Freed has only thrown 52 pitches through five innings. That is awesome. 36 strikes. So he is in good shape to keep going at the rate he's going. Hopefully another quick inning here starting with Maldonado. Who singled off of him his last time up. He gave up a leadoff single to Maldonado in the fourth, excuse me, in the third inning. And the Braves turned to double play. Gave up a leadoff single to Correa in the fourth inning. And then the Braves turned another double play. Keep him out of any trouble. 6 0. Braves on top. Max into the wide and the pitch. High ball one. Twelve more outs to get to be world champions. Wine in the pitch. High again. Come on now. Did the same thing to Maldonado a while ago. 2 0. Oh. Make him swing it. The 2 0. Oh. There you go. Took a little off. Didn't overthrow it. In there for a strike. 2 and 1. I can't imagine the amount of adrenaline still flowing through Max right now. Maybe more than ever. Yeah. Ground ball foul, third base side. First pitch strikes to 10 of the last 11 batters, to your point a minute ago, Ben, about how he's getting ahead in the count. And one guy he didn't get ahead of was this guy right here. Shift to the left for Maldonado. Freddie. The Lone Ranger on the right. Outfield straight away. Time called as Max started into his wind up. Now Leonardo trying to throw him off a little bit. Here's the three or the two one. The two two I beg your pardon. Full foul near the Braves on deck circle. Still two and two. Two again. Change up. Got him looking. Maldonado walks between the umpire and the catcher. Maybe upset with the call, but it was a beauty. Great change up. One of the best he's thrown tonight. He looks very similar tonight to what he did when he was in San Diego and threw that shutout. Everything working for him. And that's two brilliant trips through their order. Fifth strikeout of the night for him back to the top of the order in Altuve. And I agree with you, Ben. He does. Big curveball dropped in there. Called strike. Altuve let off the game with a single and had this crowd roaring. Made it around to third but didn't score. That's a rarity. He's also popped up to center. Stands well off the plate. 
And the pitch. Change and another beauty. Swing and a miss. 0 and 2. It's 60 pitches and only 18 balls. Fantastic. This is the Max Freed we know. The 0 2. Change up outside. Laid off. 1 and 2 the count. They shade Altuve to pull a little bit in the outfield. The infield pretty much straight up except for Ozzie who's cheated up the middle. A ball and two strikes. And the pitch. Fastball just missed. Pop the leather. 92. Six nothing Atlanta. Three in the third, three in the fifth. Wine in the pitch. Oh boy, that was close, but inside. Another change up, missed full count after getting ahead 0 2. Altuve checks with Michelinski on the count. And the 3 2 offering on the way. Swung on and hit hard, but foul into the crowd down the left field line. Talk about this a lot during the postseason, but especially with the Dodgers and the Astros with these good hitting lineups about how you get into fastball counts. All of a sudden, the hitters ramp up. Another payoff. Change up. Popped him up. Wow, what a pitch. On the infield, Dansby wants it. Out by second base, he'll make the catch. Two down. What a great 3-2 pitch. That's pitching with confidence. Yeah, it is. And I feel like Travis could put down anything right now, and, and Max feels comfortable with it. I'm not saying it hasn't happened, but it, we've not watched Max shake off Travis too many times tonight. Whatever Travis wants, Max is giving it to him, and, man, he's really dialing up some good pitches. Brantley was one for three with a strikeout in game two. Tonight he's 0 for two, reached on an error in the first, and takes a strike. Good curveball. He's also hit into a 1 6 3 double play. Two out, nobody on. Ten outs to get. He's ready. Max fires. Foul ball off of the umpire. Darno kind of hangs on to him, making him help him keep from staggering. Chomsky says he's okay. Not sure where it fouled off of him, but Darno is going to take a trip to the mound to give him a little time. But Mashlinski says he's fine. Played umpire's name is spelled M U C H Linsky. Which Linsky? Owen two to Brantley. Straight away, left side of the infield, a little bit to their left. Brantley, a tough guy to fan. The 0 2. Breaking ball. Grounded up the middle. Might get through. Dansby, the diving stop. Throws from his knees. Freddie, did he hold the bag? No. Wow. Dansby made a 360 spin and threw from his knees. And Freddie was able to catch the throw, but it pulled him off the bag. That was tremendous just to even make it close. That'll go as a base hit. There were two guys on the deck, Dansby, and also Ozzy who hit the deck to make sure he didn't get hit by the throw. 
Correa singled his last time up. He's one out of two. Out of the stretch, the pitch. Outside ball one. Seven on a row had been set down by Max. Oh, this is a long time in between cheers for the Astros fans. Fastball, strike call. Seventy pitches now for Max. Two out runner at first. He leads six to nothing. And the pitch to Correa. Breaking pitch missed. One and one. Shift on for Correa to the left side. Freddie holds the runner on at first. And the pitch. Check swing. He went around. Chased a bad ball. Two and one. Six to nothing Atlanta. Six hits for the Braves. Four for Houston. Correa waves that bat around above his right shoulder. The pitch. Breaking ball missed. Three and one. Make it three and two. Depending on what happens here, you might see the Braves bullpen get busy. In fact, I see somebody throwing out there right now. Jackson and Minter are up. Payoff pitch. Two out. There goes the runner. Swing and a miss. And the ball gets by Darno. He's retrieving it back by the backstop. Throw to first. Got him. Inning over. That went off the glove of Darno on the swing and miss. He had to chase it to the backstop and made a good throw to Freddie to retire Correa. Woo! Nine outs to get. And we go to the seventh. The Braves still up 6 0. Often used, Ryan Stanek is in the game. He pitched in games three, four, and five. He's in game six. Stanek makes his 13th appearance of the postseason overall 2 0 with a 180 ERA, 10 innings, two walks, nine strikeouts. They are out of left handed pitchers, so he's got to work to the Braves' top of the order, and that's Eddie Rosario and back to take you the rest of the way. Braves up by six. Here's Ben. Let's do it, Joe. Eddie, Jorge, and Freddie here in the seventh for Atlanta. Six runs, six hits for the Braves, no runs, four hits for the Astros. Eddie Rosario has been on once. That was with a walk back in the third inning. Scored a run. First pitch from Stanek. Swinging a deep drive down the right field line. If this state's fair, that's going to be another run. And just missed the pole. Dang. I mean, way down the line and about three-fourths of the way up the foul pole. And just missed it. Rosario is doing his best. Carlton Fisk. By the way, Max Reed getting a lot of hugs and high fives in the Braves dugout. Looks like his night is over. All right. We just went through a, probably his most stressful inning there yeah. in the sixth and got through it. A one to Eddie. This time, one and one. A couple of lefties do up in the seventh. That'll be Alvarez, Guriel, and Tucker do up for Houston in the bottom of the seventh. Now the Braves try to add on to this 6 0 lead here at the top of the inning. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Rip foul into the screen above the Braves' dugout. Braves got three in the third, three more in the fifth. And they have silenced the Astros at this point. Pitch outside two and two. If this is the end of the road for Max tonight, how similar, eerily similar, is this start to the game in Milwaukee? 
Six innings, three hits, no runs, walks, nine strikeouts. Six innings, three hits, no runs, or walks, six strikeouts. And that's what we're saying before the game you wanted to see. 2-2, two -two, rolls over, sends it foul. Braves two for six with runners in scoring position. They've stranded three. But for the most part, when they've gotten them on, they've gotten them in. Yep. Altogether, nine have reached. Six have scored, three left. Two balls and two strikes on Eddie. We, we've got six. I want ten. Two, two. Chase the high limb. Strike three. One down here in the seventh. That'll bring Solaire up to the plate. He climbs in with about as much confidence as anyone you've ever seen before on a baseball field. Can't blame him after that picturesque shot back in the third inning. Just magnificent. One out, base is empty. First pitch from Stanek visits the inside corner. At that slider over, no balls and a strike with Jorge Soler. Said it so many times during the final two months of the season, how many moments would come and go where the Braves saw one of the new additions from the trade deadline come through. A wine for a strike, nothing at two. And that has definitely been the case in this series. Think about the two men at the top of the order. Yeah. Rosario and Soler. Jock Peterson with some huge home runs earlier in the postseason. Well, two pitch. Bounced up there. One ball, two strikes. Six nothing Braves, top of the seventh. This team radically changed after the trade deadline. And what they became was so different from what they were in the first four months of the season. One two pitch rolled foul towards the Braves dugout. You win tonight. Counting the regular season and the postseason that would be 99 wins for this team. And what they looked like in the final two months of the season looked like a 99 win team for the regular season. Yeah. One two. A little low. Maldonado can't believe it. The slider came in a little bit low, and Mike Wachlisky didn't ring him up. That's because Martin got called out on a pitch like that. And the fact that he doesn't want to make another pitch to Solaire. Count even two and two. Panic, steady, brings the 2-2 pitch. Ground ball, a diving stop across the line by Bregman. Pops up, throws from foul ground. Bang, bang, play, and they got him. That really is a brilliant play by Alex Bregman at third base. Big league play right there, folks. Two up and two down here in the seventh. Amazing how quick he got to his feet. He wasn't down long at all. One hop throw all the way across the diamond. And he got Solaire by a step. Freddie one for three with an RBI double. Now he bats with two down and the base is empty. Six nothing Braves, top of the seven. Freddie takes a splitter low. One ball, no strikes. Freddie's four playoff homers are one shy of the franchise record for most in a single postseason. Fred McGriff hit five during the 1996 run of the World Series. 1-0 to Freddie, fouled back. Mm -hmm. 
Letty with one home run in this series. It was game five, the solo shot. One one pitch. This is struck well to deep center field. Sprinting back is Siri. Spins around. That one is gone. And right on cue, Freddie Freeman with his fifth home run this postseason. And the Braves now lead it seven to nothing. He hit that one out there in the gas pump. The Phillips 66 gas pump. Yeah, baby. That's seven. I want ten. Come on. <laughs> Slider, middle of the plate, launched. Went to deep left center. Third homer of the ball game for the Braves. Two down here is Austin Riley. He takes a hack at one and fouls it off into the seats down the right field line. Chop breaks out again. And there are dozens of Braves fans behind the third base dugout doing the chop. I don't see how they're doing it. Truist Park, that, those, those fans there. Riley takes a ball outside, one ball, one strike. Stanek hurt himself on that follow through. Says he's okay and he wants the ball back, but he went to the ground. Homer by Freddie went 416 feet. Came off his bat at 109. These balls have been blistered tonight by the Braves. Ball to strike. Pitch to Riley. Fouled back. One ball, two strikes. 7 0 Atlanta, top of the seventh. Homers have come off three different pitchers. One two to Riley. Sends one foul down the right foot line. Parking into the seats. That becomes a souvenir. Braves have taken Garcia, Javier, and Stanek out of the yard. Ball, two strikes, two down. Stanek deals. Riley takes a fastball up and in. Count even two and two. The three hardest hit balls of the ball game have been the three home runs. So there's 110, Freddie's 109, Dansby's 109. Just some missiles. They're at Minute Maid Park. Two balls, two strikes, two down. Stanek's pitch. Foul back. Good cut. Austin Riley's had a wonderful World Series. Eight for 21 coming in. Doesn't have a hit tonight. Still hitting 333. Well, if this thing ends tonight, best of luck choosing your MVP. There you go. Bunch of great candidates for that one. Still some work to do. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Rip foul again. Braves leading 7-0. We're at the top of the seven. Riley about to see his eighth pitch. Of this battle. And here it is. Takes up it in. Fastball missed. Three balls, two strikes. Stanek's got to be running on fumes, too, Ben. Yeah. Yeah. 
here's the three two pitch lifted in the air down the right field line that'll slice towards the seats and another foul ball. Austin's not tired but Stanek is mm -hmm. he just wants Austin to do something. Next pitch will be the ninth of the sequence. I love it during the regular season but especially in the postseason when these batters get up there and just battle eight nine ten pitch a B. Uh huh. Fouling off pitch after pitch. And then winning the battle with a base hit. Austin a chance to do that here. Three two pitch. In for a call third strike. That's a good slider. And that ends the top of the seventh. But Freddie Freeman goes deep for the fifth time this postseason. And that ties a franchise record for homers in the postseason by a brave with Fred McGriff from 1996. One run, one hit, no errors, and then left time to stretch. We head to the bottom of the seventh. Braves seven. Astros nothing. Brian Snicker goes to his bullpen. Max Freed won a brilliant six innings, three hit shutout ball, no walks, six strikeouts, but he'll make way for Tyler Matzik, who's the first guy out of the pen. This postseason, Tyler is 3 0 with a 198 ERA in 12 games, 20 strikeouts against four walks in 13 innings. Astros have two lefties due up this inning, and the first one is Jordan Alvarez. And what a night for Max Freed. Exactly what the Braves are looking for out of Max. And now to this bullpen that has been so strong here in the postseason. Leading the way has been this man, Tyler Madsen. First pitch to Jordan Alvarez on the way. Big swing and a miss. Line with a 97 mile an hour heater. Alvarez one for 18 in this series. He had a triple here in game two. Nothing else. Well, one from Matzik. Missed outside. One ball, one strike. Tyler's had two days rest. So have the rest of the night shift guys out there. One and one on Alvarez. Left on left matchup. Magic comes set right at the letters. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Swing and a miss again. Fastball 98. Woo! What'd you say? One for his last 18? No, uh, he's one for 18 in the World Series. The Red that, Sox would hear that and say, How in the world did you do that? Yeah. I think he had two four hit games, didn't he? Yeah. At least one four hit game, maybe the last one against the Red Sox. One two pitch. Lifted the left field, and that's down for a base hit. Lead off single for Alvarez here, the seventh. Been a common theme all night. They've had the leadoff man on base a ton in this ballgame. It's the fourth time in seven innings they've had the leadoff man on. 7 nothing Braves, bottom of the seventh, runner at first, no one out. Good piece of hitting there by Alvarez, getting a fastball away and taking it the other way. Muriel 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a ground out. Matzik ready to go to work. His first pitch. By the way, one ball, no strike. Braves have only out hit the Astros seven to five. But the five base hits for the Astros have all been singles. Three of the Braves' seven hits have cleared the wall. 1 0 to Guriel. Hit in the air to right, Jock Peterson angling back just shy of the warning track. Slows, stops, makes the catch. One out here in the seventh. Bad now in the hands of Kyle Tucker, another lefty. Astro fans standing, some of them waving the orange towels, but I'm near like it was earlier. 
They're just hoping for anything to try to get them going. The Astros had two men in scoring position in the first inning. Couldn't score. And no one's been there since. Tyler Matzer trying to keep it that way. Runner at first, one down. Tyler deals. Tucker takes a call strike. Put a slider over the outside corner. Tucker 0 for 2, a ground out to short, also a strikeout. One to Tucker. Ground ball out to Freddie and foul. Just on the other side of the bag. He was reaching for it, but that went foul. Another two count on Tucker. Bounce one to Freddie there. Holding the runner on it. Be kind of nice. Sure would. Step on the bag. Throw to second. And get Alvarez. Anybody can needle a throw around Alvarez. It's Freddie. Yeah. No two count on Kyle Tucker. Long look in by Magic. Arno sets up away in the 0 2 pitch. Off the plate. This with a fastball. 100 miles an hour. One and two on Tucker. Magic, the second pitcher the Braves have used in the ballgame. Houston has used six already. I have Presley ready to come in next inning. Magic's one, two. Hit hard out to right field. Jock comes in, slides to it, and makes a catch and goes into a barrel roll. Might have lost that in the lights for just a second, but was able to find it in spirit. That's a huge catch. You know what? He can turn in a gem once in a while. I remember a catch he made near the end of a ball game in Atlanta up against the below the chop. Yeah, this against one, the Giants. Yeah, this one he slides and then his knee kind of stuck in the grass and caused him to pop up and roll over, but he held on to the baseball. And it was a beautiful barrel roll for the out. <laughs> Two down now for Bregman. 7 nothing Braves here in the bottom of the seven. Alvarez the runner at first. Pitch on the way to Brakeman. Strike. And a slider over the outside corner. Defense for the Braves tonight has been much better than some of these other ball games earlier in the World Series. That's 6 0 1 to the plate. Bregman a check swing. He wins. 0 oh 2. Is it not? Yeah, he did. Okay. Scoreboard said 1-1. One, one. Yeah. Okay. Now he's barking at Mitzlinski. Yeah, he definitely went. Definitely. See if Max can strike him out to end things here in the seventh. This will be Tyler's 13th pitch of the inning. 0-2 from Matzik. Got him swinging strike three. Down they go in the seventh. No runs, one hit, no errors, one man left. Folks, we're heading to the eighth inning. Braves need one win to win the World Series. They have a 7 0 lead through seven. 7 0 Atlanta. Let's pause for station identification so the fans 680 and 93.7 FM can identify themselves. The only local call of the 2021 World Series is on WCNN North Atlanta on Dickey Broadcasting Station, The Fan, and stream it free on The Fan app. Right-hander Ryan Presley, their closer, will come on and work here in the eighth inning. He worked an inning and two-thirds two nights ago, three nights ago. He faced five batters, struck out four of them. And he will face Duvall, Peterson, and Ozzie for the Braves in the eighth. 
And it's 7-0 Atlanta into the top of the eighth inning. Three home runs for the Braves tonight. First pitch to Adam. He hits one deep to a center field coming over Jose Siri, and he slides, and he's cut off by Kyle Tucker, who made the catch. And somehow they avoided a serious collision out at right center field. That was dangerous. Well, Tucker makes the catch right in front of Siri. Yeah, they both went to the ground like they were doing cartwheels. They were both spinning around. Very fortunate they're both up and okay. Well, when Tucker went in front of him, Tucker was on his feet. Siri was sliding into him on his knees. Well, that could have gone all sorts of wrong. Fortunately, no one injured. One down for Jack Peterson is over three. They shift versus Jock. Check swing of the first pitch and appeal goes down the third baseline. He didn't commit. One ball, no strikes. By the way, the Astros will have eight, nine, and one due up in the bottom of the eighth. That's Siri, Maldonado, and Altuve. And we'll see if that's who actually hits. Here's the 1 0. Jock takes one low and in. Two balls, no strikes. Braves pretty much followed a similar plan, at least offensively, is what they did in the last game with Homer's early and early lead. But this go round, the pitching has been significantly better. Silencing the Astros through seven, seven innings. 2 0 pitch. Hard hit ball, but right to the first baseman, Guriel goes to a knee, pops up, takes it to the bag, two down. So coming into this ball game, you and I are talking about how it wouldn't shock us if Ozzy dropped out of the two hole. Well, they've dropped him to seven, and man, has he answered tonight. Two singles, a walk, two runs scored. Batting from the left side against the righty Presley. First pitch in for a strike with a curveball. He said to Brian Snicker on his show today, it's like a change of neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You know, different scenery. Sometimes you have different situations come up that change the way you approach your at bat. Tonight it's really worked successfully for Ozzy. Waits on a 0 1 from Presley. Here it is. Ground ball chopper fouled on the first base line. Two of the four at bats now were leading off, and he got on base each of those two times and scored. Looking at an 0 2 count here, trying to stay out of a 1 2 3 inning. Two to Ozzy. With a fly ball to center. Jose Siri backpedaling a few steps. A few strides over. Makes the catch. Braves go down one, two, three in the top of the eighth. Eight, nine, one coming up for Houston. We head that way with the Braves on top seven to nothing. Six precious outs to get. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Tyler Matzik still out there for the Braves. Guillermo Heredia has checked in to play center field. Duvall moves over to right field. Jock Peterson out of the game. Matzik will face 8 9 and 1 for the Astros, and Elenmus Diaz will lead off pinch hitting for Siri. And Marwin Gonzalez is on deck for Houston. So Diaz, Gonzalez, and Altuve here in the bottom of the eighth inning versus Matzik. Marwin Gonzalez, a switch hitter, so Matzik will see three straight right handed bats in the bottom of the eighth inning. 7 0 Atlanta. First pitch on the way to Diaz. Try. First pitch slider. Led Miss Diaz hitting 200 in the postseason. Pitch from Matzik. 
is for the fastball. Just a little bit inside. This is the role we've seen Diaz in pretty much the entire series. His pinch hitting opportunities here and there. We saw him in the eighth inning in game four. That's the most recent signing for Diaz. He flew out to left field. Leads off the bottom of the eighth. Tyler set at the letters and a 1-1 on the way from the lefty. Now back 1-2. and two. Amy Garcia now tossing for Houston. And if he is the Astros hurler in the ninth, he would face 8, 9, and 1. Tyler Matzik looking for three outs to ensure at least a seven-run lead for the ninth. One and two on Diaz. Tyler looking to get the leadoff man. Working from ahead. That is one, two on the way. Rounded foul towards the Braves dugout. Big story in this ball game: The homers for the Braves and the pitching of Max Freed. Three-run shot in the third by Jorge Soler. Two-run shot in the fifth by Dansby Swanson. And a solo bomb for Freddie Freeman in the seventh. Meanwhile, Freed, six shutout innings, allowing four hits, no walks, and six strikeouts. And since then, it's been matching. He worked the seventh, now working the eighth. And it's one-two on the way to Aledmus Diaz. Got him looking, strike three. What a beautiful slider over the outside corner, and he buckled the knees of Aledmus Diaz. One out here in the eighth. Gonzalez now caught upon the pinch hit. And what we said about Diaz could be applied also to Marvin Gonzalez. Used as a pinch hitter. He had a two RBI single in game five. Not having a bad postseason. Hitting 333. As he's had three at bats. Two RBIs as I mentioned. Pitch for Matzik. He's low and inside with a slider. Yeah, after the bases loaded walk to Maldonado in game five, Gonzalez had the broken back single to left to drive in those two runs. Waves have Luke Jackson up and tossing in the bullpen. All of those strikes on Gonzalez. No pitch on the way. It's tied. Two balls, no strikes. Seven nothing Atlanta. Bottom of the eighth. Base is empty. One down for Gonzalez. Matzik has thrown 20 pitches, 14 strikes. 2 0 count on Gonzalez. Here's his 2 0. Just inside with a fastball. Looked to be there, but just off the corner. 42,868 in attendance. They're begging for just a spark, anything to try to get them going. That's to try to make sure that doesn't happen. Three balls and no strikes. Here's his offering to Gonzalez. Right down the pike, he called strike, three and one. You don't have to go back very far. I think it was game six or seven against Bo game six against Boston at Fenway. Right. When they scored seven runs in the ninth inning. Very dangerous lineup. Three balls at a strike on Gonzalez. Matt six pitch. Fouled back. Just to our right. Now it's coming in hot. Three balls, two strikes. Yeah, it was. Glad it was high because otherwise it was going right at John Smoltz, and we know how bad he is on, <laughs> on foul balls. <laughs> I don't think Joe Buck was going to save him either. Nope. He would have laughed, though. Time taken. Mike Michelinski walks out of the behind the plate, makes sure Tyler sees him. And again, more fans down behind the Braves dugout doing the tomahawk chop. 
Tyler Magic with a 3 2 count of Marwin Gonzalez. One down, base is empty. And now the 3 2. Check swing. Got him. Throw that around the horn. A slider fans Marwin Gonzalez and two down here in the eighth. Back to the top of the order to Jose Altuve, who's one for three. What a nice comeback. Matzik gets Altuve here. That would be the third one, two, three inning of the night for Braves pitchers. First two on Max Fried's watch. Seven nothing Atlanta. Two outs. Bases empty. Bottom of the eighth. Pitch to Altuve. A swing and a miss. Hey, what the Braves have found a pitch to go to that Altuve has trouble with, and that is a curveball. He was stranded at third base when the first inning ended. A one pitch. A little low. If the Astros don't win this ball game, I'm sure they'll look back in the first inning and say what might have been. Yeah. And especially from a momentum standpoint, just to get one run across. Strikeout of Correa was enormous. Sure was. One and one and out two base. Magic looking for one more out to put him away in the eighth. One one pitch. Swing and a miss. Got a fastball by him. Ball and two strikes on Jose Altuve. Nine strikeouts for Braves pitchers. No walks tonight. Which is enormous because they had drawn 19 walks in the first five games of this series and five of those men had scored. There you go. Here's the one two. Have a seat. Got him looking. Slider pierced the outside corner, and the Atlanta Braves are three outs away from a world championship. Three. Count them. We head to the ninth. Braves seven. Astros nothing. We go to the ninth. A lot of changes for the Astros. Aledmus Diaz stays in the game. He pinch hit. He'll stay in the game and play left field. Michael Brantley will move over to play right. Tucker will move from right to center. Siri was already out of the game. Now catching is Garrett Stubbs just into the game. And on the mound to pitch is Jimmy Garcia. Garcia in his 10th game in the postseason, 1-1, one one, a 7.88 ERA. Eight, nine, and one for the Braves. That's all I got for you. All right. They're watching the scene back in Atlanta, the battery, and folks in the stadium just bouncing all over the place. Knowing they are three outs away from history. 7-0 Atlanta, top of the night. Astros in the bottom of the inning will have Brantley, Correa, and Alvarez. 2-3-4. First pitch to Darno. Swung on, popped up. Coming back, Stubbs. And possibly playable. No, that's in the second row on the other side of the screen. Will Smith now tossing in the Braves bullpen. Braves have gone freed for six, Matzik for two. And the plan would be for Smith to go the final inning. Seven runs and seven hits for the Braves. No runs, five hits for the Astros. Ball outside to Travis Darno. Travis looking for a base hit. Hasn't been on tonight. Swing to it's a fly ball to center. Kyle Tucker coming in. Throws on the brakes. Looks up into the Texas sky. Makes the catch. One down here in the ninth. I know who I would be voting for for the MVP. Let's hear it. He's a guy who hit a home run on the third pitch of the series in the first inning. First mm -hmm. time anybody's ever done that. The first inning of game one. He hit a pinch hit game-winning homer in game four. 
He hit a three run homer tonight to give the Braves the lead. Yeah, what a story. 4K Soler. Guy was hitting 192 in Kansas City when the Braves traded for him. Dansby takes a called strike. They grab him. It's about 250 with the Braves. And then just tears it up in the postseason when he was healthy. Remember, coming to play this World Series, he set out the championship series against L.A. on the COVID list. Right. Good point. A one to Dansby in for a strike, nothing in two. I remember Carlos Beltran playing in the postseason a decade ago and just being a beast, just yeah. hitting homer after homer, and that parlayed into an enormous uh, or too low and outside. Free agent contract for him yeah. with the Mets. Jorge Soler, what he's doing with the possibility of the DH being in both leagues next year. Oh, man. Bring back a healthy Acuna. He's going to be a very popular guy. <laughs> Hope he's right here. One, two. Dansby lines one right to Correa short. And two down. So Eddie Rosario will come to the plate. 0 for 3 with a walk and a run scored. You could have an MVP 1, 1A, one 1B, one 1C. One He'd be one of them. Eddie Rosario. Soler, Rosario, Freeman. Incredible job in this World Series by those guys. Suddenly a lot of empty seats in this ballpark. Riley's name on that list. Pitch on the way to Rosario. There's a called strike. Brave seven. Astros nothing. For one pitch, ground ball out to first. That'll be taken by Guriel. He takes it to the back. Folks, when we come back, the Braves are three outs away from winning the World Series. It'll be two, three, and four coming up for Houston. Heading that way when we come back, seven nothing Atlanta. Three little bitty outs to get. Three, count them. Will Smith on to work the ninth inning. He's been in ten games. He's two and zero. Oh. He does not have an ERA because he hasn't given up a run. Ten innings, four hits, no runs, three walks, eight strikeouts. You don't really need to hear all of that. What you need to hear is Ben calling the next three outs. Boy, it's been a long time, buddy. Yes. Fired up? Let's do it. Put that Mountain Dew down. You don't need that. <laughs> it is 11.23 p.m. Eastern, 10.23 Central. On the 2nd of November, 2021. And the Atlanta Braves are three outs away from winning the World Series. Michael Bradley to lead off for Houston. He's been on base twice, has one base hit, altogether one for three. First pitch on the way, almost hit him. Curveball sailed over his head. One ball, no strikes. Seven runs, seven hits, one error for the Braves. No runs, five hits, no errors for the Astros. A ship to the right side of the infield. A 1-0 pitch on the way. In for a strike. Will looking for the three biggest outs of his life. What have the Braves out homered them by in this series? It is 11-2. On a strike on Brantley. Smith deals. Swung on, fouled off. Marking over the Braves dugout. And into the second deck of the stadium for a souvenir. One and two. Brantley digs in, taps the plate. Will Smith looking into his catcher, Travis Darno. Big lefty from Noonan, Georgia, comes set. His one two on the way. Missed low, two balls, two strikes. Only the St. Louis Cardinals, a wild card team, 
had worse odds to win the World Series than did the Braves from baseball. In baseball. Three outs. Come on, boys. Smith set. 2 2 on the way. Just missed the outside corner. Three and two now on Brantley. Will trying to do what Matzik and Freed did before him, and that's not walk anyone. Yeah, don't spoil the scorecard. Three balls and two strikes. Here's the payoff pitch from Will. Hit in the air, out towards right field, and down for a base hit. Leadoff single for Michael Brantley. Adam Duvall fires it in. Sixth base hit of the ball game for Houston. That brings Correa up to the plate. Even in the ninth inning, down 7 0, Michael Brantley's not going to take an at bat off. Uh -uh. But don't go to three ball counts. Braves had a shift to the left side versus Correa. He's one for three with a single and two strikeouts. Here's the pitch. There's a strike. Got ahead of him with a good fastball. A one to Correa. In for a strike. Pound of the zone with another heater. Nothing in two. Will didn't do, want to do that again. He didn't want to get deep in a count like he did with Brantley. Here's the 0-2 to Correa. Missed low. Tried that slider down and in. Didn't swing over the top of it. A 1-2 count. No one out. Runner at first. A 1-2 count on Carlos Correa. 7-0 Braves in the bottom of the ninth in Game 6 of the World Series. One-two pitch on the way. Hit in the air towards right center field. Trying to get there. Adam Duvall. He ranges to it and he makes the catch in right center just shy of the warning track. One down in the ninth. Two to go. And now it is Alvarez. Alvarez hit into a double play in the fourth inning. So he's a likely suspect. Double play right here, and you're world champions. Braves in that shift to the right side. Dansby, Ozzy, and Freddie all over there. Pitch on the way. Lifted foul over the Braves dugout. Oh, no one count on Jordan Alvarez. Need two more outs. You boys might ought to start drinking some water. You might not be drinking much the rest of the night. How about DP Lane right here to end <laughs> it? Turn a double play right here, and it's good night, Houston. I think about A.D. Adrianza. He's on the paternity list. He went home to be with his wife. He's not here. Oh, what a shame. A one. That one missed. Try to fastball. Just a little bit outside. strike left on left matchup lead at first for Brantley and the pitch on the way strike two fastball right at the knees after Alvarez it's Guriel will come set one two pitch Missed low. Not a bad idea. Two balls and two strikes as that fastball just a tad low to Jordan Alvarez. Yeah, 
Uh, he took a pitch away to left field for a base hit his last time up. But he's had trouble with breaking pitches. The one he hit tonight was a fastball. Riley, the third baseman, playing where Dansby would normally play it short as they're shifted to the right side. Two balls, two strikes, seven nothing Braves in the ninth. One out, one on. Two two pitch. Miss low it outside. Three balls, two strikes. Everyone standing here in Houston, 42,868. A 3-2 count on Alvarez. And a payoff from Big Will. Hit in the air to deep left. Going back is Rosario. He's got room and two down. Makes the catch with a warning track. It is 11.31 Eastern, 10.31 Central in Houston, Texas. And the Atlanta Braves are one out away from winning the World Series here on the 2nd of November, 2021. Yuli Gurriel climbs into the right-hand batter's box. One out will do it. 7-0 Atlanta. And the first pitch on the way. Taken for a strike, 0 and 1. Lefty righty matchup. Guriel 0 for 3 in the ballgame. 0 1 pitch on the way. Fouled back, nothing in 2. What started in late February has extended into November. And the Braves one pitch away. One more strike, and the Braves will hoist the trophy. Nothing in two. Come on now. Smith comes set of the Tomahawk. 0-2 oh, on the way. Chopper out to Dansby. Dansby throws to first base. Is this happening? It is. The Atlanta Braves are world champions. The Atlanta Braves have won the 2021 World Series in six games over the Houston Astros. Pure euphoria down on the field as they're bouncing all over the infield. And in the booth. Celebration going on on the field. And, folks, this is what dreams are made of. And for the 2021 Atlanta Braves, the dream has come true. They are world champions in 2021. What an incredible moment and a wonderful time for all of us. I'm size 13. <laughs> oh, my goodness. They were left for dead, Ben. They were left for dead. Then they got a team together at the end of July and decided, hey, why don't we go ahead and play baseball? And look at them now. They got after it. Yeah, they did. Dansby looked to second and then fired to first, and Freddie Freeman caught the final out. And they're celebrating and, in between the mound and second. And immediately stuck that baseball in his back pocket. Oh, man. Nothing beats us, Joe Simpson. No, sir. I'll tell you what. I'm going to head downstairs, and we're going to do some interviews along the way because we're not going home anytime soon. And we're going to have a good time. Break out the bubbly, baby. <laughs> oh, man. Time to light up the cigars, pour some champagne. The Atlanta Braves, for the fourth time, in franchise history, our World Series champions, and this 2021 ball club will go down with the clubs from 1995, 1957, and 1914. And one of the greatest stories in the history of this franchise has an ending. And my, what an ending it is. See, the uh, stage being set up on the field. We're about to have the trophy presentation. And Commissioner Rob Manford is about to present the Atlanta Braves the World Championship Trophy in 2021. I love it. The 
celebration for the ages. Braves win it seven to nothing in the sixth game of the World Series. They win it on the road, winning games one, three, four, and six, and taking down the Houston Astros in six games. A team that won 88 games during the regular season. No one thought they had any business being on the field with some of the teams that they face in the postseason, and they rolled through them all. And Brian Snicker, in his 45th year in the organization, is a world champion manager in the big leagues. That is incredible. It's going to be one heck of a movie, isn't it? Folks, we're just getting started. We are just getting started. Joe Simpson is heading down to the field. And we're going to be hearing from as many folks as we can. Of course, that will be taking place after the ceremony. Let me go ahead and run you through the totals of tonight's clincher for the Braves. Atlanta wins 7 to nothing over the Houston Astros. For the Braves, seven runs, seven hits, one error. Three men left on base. The Braves with three homers tonight. Jorge Soler, a three-run homer. Dansby Swanson, a two-run homer. Freddie Freeman with a solo shot. For the Astros, no runs. Shut out for the second time in this World Series. Six hits, no errors, and five men left on base. Max Breed is the winning pitcher. Luis Garcia takes the loss. No save in the game. Time of the game, three hours and 22 minutes. In front of 42,868 here in Houston. Remember, you score when the Braves score. All season when the Braves score five or more runs, you score a discount at Express Oil Change and Tire Engineers. And today the Braves scored seven runs, meaning you get $7 off a full-service oil change tomorrow only at Ex Express Oil Change and Tire Engineers. Fans down behind the Braves dugout doing the tomahawk chop. And the team assembling down on the field, putting on their championship gear, their hats, their T-shirts, hugs and tears and smiles all the way around. Stage has been set up down the third base line. And in just a moment, the Atlanta Braves will be handed the trophy. went at 7 nothing, as I mentioned. Joe is going to be down on the field in just a little while. Right now, Kevin McAlpin is down in the dugout. And, Kevin, what's it look like from field level? Oh, man, Ben, this is incredible. Tears are flowing. The T-shirts are out. Snit is about as emotional as I've ever seen him in his life. Uh, these guys, I think it's just, I think it's a relief more than anything, Ben. <laughs> these guys have been through so much this season. What an incredible run, and uh, boy, seeing the, just the look on these guys' faces. We've seen them excited, Ben. I, I've never seen anything like this before. Well, 11 wins wins you the World Series once you get into the postseason. Yeah. And they're the hardest 11 wins <laughs> you'll ever come across. And we just saw them cross that finish line, and they earned it. Every single one of them. Going through the Brewers, the Dodgers, the Astros, and the Braves are world champions. And it's just an amazing scene, Kevin. And one that we've hoped that we would see for the longest time. And here it is right in front of them. Yeah, it really is. You got the trophy coming out. The MVP trophy's up on the stage. They'll obviously award that. I don't know who they're going to pick. Feels like Jorge Soler's got a, the inside track, at least for now. But there's so many guys you can pick it from. And, and what a job by Alex Anthopoulos and, and the job that he did at the trading deadline to make all these moves. Ben, I think the one thing it shows you is you don't have to go out and get the biggest name, right? You can plug a number of holes with guys that are, you know, maybe role players or maybe just fell out of favor in other places. And these guys all had a big time impact. And it's just, it's incredible. You know, they put together the best team. Yeah. The best team just won the World Series. And a 
again the Braves are champions for the first time since 1995 and I'm right there with you Kevin you, you got a, a long list of guys you could choose from where it, there, there's one of about five or six guys if you told me they're the MVP mm -hmm. I'd say yeah yeah you can make a case for so many of those guys see uh, what about the scene Kevin right above the Braves dug out on the third base line right now I mean tens of thousands of I mean they would they say 43,000 in the building I'm peeking my head out right now and I'm telling you there are 10,000 fans above the Braves dugout right now. This is just an incredible scene. And they were loud and they had a lot to cheer for here tonight. And you can hear them behind me, Ben. You can hear this crowd. It's 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 incredible. Braves fans have traveled. They've been there all year. And boy, they were rewarded to uh, one heck of a finish here tonight. Man, were they. Man. 11:32 Eastern, 10:32 Central in Houston, Texas. The Braves won their fourth World Series championship mm. here on November the 2nd, 2021. And a Tuesday night we will never, ever forget, Kevin. And yeah. I think about this scene here and also the scene back in Atlanta mm. in the ballpark and in the battery and the party that must be taking place over there right now. And, and kudos to the Astros fans. There was a really nice ovation when we came out on the field. They were really, I mean, I'll give them credit. It was a, a sign of respect here in Houston. They're, they're good fans. It's a good fan base here. And they let the Braves fans know that, uh, hey, you know what? It's not the hostile environment that some other places might be when the opposing team wins. And how about this, Ben? It's 2021, and we still haven't seen a home team celebrate a World Series title on their turf since 2013. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. And the last three World Series champions have been crowned on Texas soil. How about that? Nationals here a couple of years ago, Dodgers last year in Arlington, and the Braves in 2021 here in Houston. I don't know about you, but every time I think of Houston, Texas for the rest of my life, this is going to be the first memory that comes to mind. Yeah, and there's so, and so many memories from this game. I mean, you think back, first two batters of the game, you see Max Fried on the ground, and you're thinking, oh, no. You know, that, that, what you're thinking worst-case scenario. And then the way he was able to just lock it in from there, incredible job that he did. And then offensively, Jorge Soler hit a ball to Galveston. I don't think it's landed yet. They call that 460. Uh, I'll take 560. Yeah. I mean, just incredible. So, Freddie Freeman, big night for him. Hey, how about Ozzy Albies, by the way? Moving down in the order, got him going here tonight. It was just, it was a total team effort. And, Ben, that's that's sort of been the MO of this team all season long. It's not just one guy, right? You're not just waiting for Freddie to heat up, or you're not just waiting for somebody to put the team on their back for a period of time. And it's, it's remarkable. I, I was also talking about this in the press box. Jorge Soler, who delivers the three run homer. He was the final addition at the dead. They got him at like 401 on yeah. deadline day. The last guy you get has some of the biggest swings of the whole season. Incredible. Team heading to the stage right now. And the trophy right there front and center. Braves dignitaries there and the team coming to follow. Crowd down the third baseline. All the Braves fans that were in this stadium <laughs> have now assembled in one giant section behind the Braves dugout. Yeah. And they're going crazy down there. And rightfully so. I mean, this is unbelievable. I mean, the whole lower level down the left field line is just full of Brave fans. Chopping, chanting. And I'll tell you what, it's going to be a long night for all these people tonight. <laughs> And you mean that in the best possible way. No question. I don't think they're going to need a plane <laughs> to fly home. No doubt. <laughs> well, the MVP trophy is on display right next to the commissioner's trophy. And now all the press is assembling there in front of the stage. The entire team is on the stage, all wearing their world championship T-shirts and hats. Eddie Rosario proudly holding the Puerto Rican flag. Guillermo Heredia holding the Cuban flag. Multiple players wearing, draping the flag of their country around their necks. This is just tremendous. And for all of you listening throughout Braves country, on the Fan 680 and 93.7 FM, the flagship of the Braves, also on the Fan app, or wherever you may be, Braves fans worldwide, a night that we have been waiting for for a very long time and has taken place in all its glory here in Houston, Texas. The Atlanta Braves are World Series champions. Ben, you've got some of the family members coming down, joining the team on the field. Confetti's being sp spread all over the dugout down here. The cigars are lit.
And it's just, uh, it, it's an incredible scene down here. I'm trying to think of the over-under on how many cigars I'm going to smoke by 5 a.m. All of them. All of them. Ozzy's got the Curacao flag draped around him. Just such a proud moment for this entire group. This is just amazing. This is just wonderful to watch. And for those of you who can't watch and are listening here on the radio, it's great to have you with us. Ben, you've got Joe Simpson down here, so I'm going to turn it over to a pro. All right, thank you, Kevin. We appreciate it. <laughs> Joe, what's it like down there? Hey, Ben. Hey, Joe. Yo. How you doing? Good. <laughs> I'm doing great. Team is down there on the stage. presentation of the commissioner's trophy. Oh good. I hope I hope our fans greet the commissioner as he should be greeted. <laughs> I have no doubt. introduce who's on the podium with us Terry McGurk the chairman of the Atlanta Braves Derek Schiller president and CEO Brian Snicker the manager and the rest of the world champion Atlanta Braves after a great 2021 season and a dramatic postseason it's my honor and pleasure to present the Commissioner's Trophy to the World Series champion Atlanta Braves and their CEO, Terry McGurk. So how does it feel to hold that trophy? Oh my gosh, it's been 26 years. The fans here are unbelievable. I got to thank Snit, this team. They overcame unbelievable things to get here. Alex, you all know the story of Alex. An unbelievable decision-making mid-year. The fans are back in Atlanta dancing in the streets. We filled Truist Park tonight, and they're going wild. And we can't wait to get back and celebrate with them. But I want to thank two angels that are up there tonight. Say, made sure this happened. Hank Aaron and Phil Necro. Thank you, boys, for having us win this thing tonight. World champs. Well said. Thank you. Congrats. Okay, thanks. Let's go over to the manager, Brian Snicker. Brian, you are a Braves lifer. You started your career as a player in the organization. You were coaching in the minors the last time this team won a World Series. I can't even imagine what this feels like for you. Um, I'm numb. I'm numb. Um, this is the greatest, greatest thing in the world. Uh, Braves country, we appreciate you and love you. We love all of y'all. Thank you for coming here and being a part of this with us because we couldn't do it without you. And these guys are up here, they love and appreciate you all also, man. It's just so, honey, honey, we did it. <laughs> no, this is awesome. You know, when, when, when I think of this team, I think of resiliency. I mean, you, you lost one of your best players in the middle of the summer, and, and then you're trying to just get to 500, and then so many things comes down the last week of the regular season just to win the division. How did you do it? No, they, these guys never gave up on themselves. We used a lot of guys. We lost a lot of a lot of pieces over the course of the summer, and it was just the next man up. I mean, it was these guys never stopped believing in themselves. They never stopped working. Our coaching staff, my God, I got the I got a rock star coaching staff that made you know that made sure these guys stay consistent every day and they always played the game the way you're supposed to play it and with a lot of emotion and give themselves a chance to be here on this stage right now it's been uh, 26 years obviously you were in the organization yeah. how does this feel organization wide you could speak to it no it is it takes a lot to make this happen and our, I'm very proud of our organization proud of this club and there is nothing better we're world champions congrats Brian thank you Why don't we uh, why don't we hear from Mr. Brave Freddie Freeman? What do you guys think? Yeah. 
you ever dream of a moment like this? This is what you dream about. Every single year, we come into spring training wanting this to happen, and it happened this year. Freddie, you know, you were a link. You, when you first came up, you had a couple playoff teams, and then you went through some rough years, and now you're on the top of the top. How did you do it, and what's most gratifying about this ride? Uh, I think the most gratifying thing is this team, we hit every pothole, every bump you could possibly hit this year. Injuries, every single kind of thing that could have happened, that could go wrong, went wrong and we overcame every single one of those things. This group, we came every single day, prepared and worked and worked and worked, and we ended up November 2nd, world champions. What does this mean for the city of Atlanta? I think it means everything. Uh, we've been waiting for a championship in this city for a long time, and I'm glad we delivered it. Last thing, how cool is it that one day you get to tell your grandkids that not only did you win, but you hit a home run in the decisive game of the World Series? That's that's pretty cool. Uh, I, I saw my family jumping up and down when I when I was rounding the bases, so I'm, I'm glad I was able to help. Freddie Freeman, ladies and gentlemen. Congrats, Freddie. Okay, we've got another trophy to hand out. The Willie Mays World Series MVP presented by Chevrolet, Jorge Soler. <laughs> Jorge's here with his interpreter, Franco Garcia, and Jorge... I think back to the history of the World Series, there's only been one other Cuban MVP, Levon Hernandez did it. What does that mean to you to be the second ever Cuban MVP? Bueno, estoy muy emocionado. Primeramente, gracias a Dios por darme la oportunidad de estar aquí en este equipo y muy orgulloso de ser el segundo cubano. Uh, obviously, I'm very excited. Thanks to God for the opportunity to be on this team, and I'm extremely excited to be the second Cuban born player to win this award. Well, hey, tell me about your at bat. You had a couple foul balls against Garcia. Looks like you were seeing the ball well against him, and then you hit one out of the stadium. How did you do it? I was just really focused during that bat. I feel like he had thrown me every pitch that he had his arsenal. So I just kept fouling the pitches off, eventually got into that 3-2 count, and he hung the slider, and I was able to drive it. Jorge, congratulations. The World Series MVP, Jorge Soler. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the fun. And the world champion Braves back on top. Let's go back upstairs. Outstanding. Team is celebrating down on the stage. They've been presented the trophy. Congratulations to Jorge Soler as he is the MVP of the World Series. Joe, you nailed it with that call. Confetti flying down onto the stage as the folks are doing the chop back behind the third base dugout. And the Braves have won the World Series here in Houston, Texas. Gonna be a celebration for the ages. I promise you that much. Team still high-fiving and hugging and just smile after smile after smile down there on that stage. Best night of their lives. Team now leaving the stage are about to assemble in front of the mound. Looks like it's picture time. Time for that group photo. Confetti all over that stage, and they're holding the trophy and taking it down onto the field. I can hear you. Joe, how was that celebration down there from and the trophy presentation, furthermore, from your vantage point? It was great. It was great. I got confetti all over me. It's wonderful. I'm seeing a lot of Braves people here. Chip Moore's down here on the field. Saw Freddie's dad. He's very proud and very teary. It's awesome. And to see the commissioner give the Atlanta Braves the World Series trophy caps it all off. And did you hear all the boos? Yes. He handed over the trophy and took a hike. <laughs> I don't blame him. Yep.
Well, the Braves got the last laugh, didn't they, Joe? Yeah, they did indeed, Ben. And, um, you know, what? you just can't say enough. Uh, I think Brian said it best when he said his, his coaching staff is like, uh, you know, they're rock stars. Um, for this team to uh, hold everything together after the injury to Ronald and to go get the players they got and to turn this season around from a 500 middling team to a world champion that says a lot about the staff says a lot about brian but a lot about the staff it does well i I remember going to spring training and knowing what the braves accomplished last year being so close and jonathan chadwick and i were having a conversation he says what do you think happens this year i said i like us said for what i said the world series and what i'm getting at is is at the time joe you knew that this was a possibility but once you got to the end of spring training all sorts of adversity started coming the Braves' way, starting with Mike Soroka, Marcelo Zuna, Ronald Acuna, Travis Darno. The list goes on and on. Waskari Noah, um, Max Freed spent some time on IL. And, and the season got off to such a rough start, and you thought, well, can, can they figure it out? And then May turned into June, and June into July. And next thing you knew, you're 100 games into the season and had not had a winning record yet. Right. It would have been very easy to say this isn't happening. Yeah, it's not. They're not going anywhere. It's just not going to happen. They've tried everything, and then they make these deals. They made four deals at the deadline, which is hard enough to pull off. Furthermore, tougher to pull off four deals that all hit and all change your ball club. And they win nine in a row on the road in August, and then they keep rolling. They had a series with the Giants. They took two out of three. They rolled into September. They're in first place. Over 500 for the first time in 100 and, uh, I believe, 106 games is what it was, somewhere in that neighborhood. And then just take off from there. So when they got to the postseason with 88 wins, everybody overlooked them with the 88 wins compared to what the Giants had and the Dodgers had and the Brewers had. But the mistake that was made was that 88 wins, that, that, that figure didn't matter. What they were in the final two months of the season was every bit as good as what those teams had been the entire season. And that's the beauty of 162. And they had time to get there, win the division, then start playing their best baseball, and now world champions. It's a ride that no one could have predicted. No, nobody could have ever said that this was going to happen uh, in early July, you know, when things were going south. When uh, Ronald got hurt, uh, now what do we do? Uh, it, it, it's just it's storybook stuff. Hey, Mike, I got Mike Soroka here real quick. All right, what a, what a thrill! What a thrill! I know I'm, it's amazing. Go it's ahead. Amazing. No, we're good. We're good. We on it. Hey, it's Tookie, amazing. you guys, uh, I'm, who who could have predicted this? Uh, I we all did in, in spring training. I don't know if we would have done it in June, but in spring training we did. Right. Well. It's happened. I see the confetti. I saw a trophy presented, so it's real, huh? Yeah, it's it's amazing. It's uh, it's surreal. I mean, you see it on TV every year, and, and I mean, you never know what it's going to be like until you're in that moment. And to be honest, I don't think it hit me until the sixth inning. I know we had a pretty comfortable lead, but... Oh, well, well, you had a, five, a four-run lead the other night, and you knew that that wasn't safe. Yeah, but looking at Max and yeah, different story. Knowing, knowing the, the horses that we got down there, it felt too good, and... And it, it just felt like, you know, that, that game was ours. And, uh, you know, I, it hit us down there, I think, then is when the deep breathing started every out, <laughs> counting them with the center fielder and, and Heredia and Rosario looking back every out. Uh, I mean, it's all those experiences to remember forever. Well, I know you've got uh, more work to do this winter to get ready and get back here next year. Better believe it. All right. Mike Soroka. Thanks, Mike. Here in the years after that. Hey, get in there and get you, get you something to drink. I know you're thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Other guys have gone by, Ben. Uh, they're headed to the clubhouse. Some others still, most everybody's still out on the field. Uh, a lot of cigars lit up. Did you hand out cigars? Uh, no, I, I haven't yet. Okay. I, I'm, I'm about to start handing them out to you guys because yeah, I'm ready you, to cut that thing and light it up. You need to save one, of course. I got you. All right. But, uh, yeah, I see a lot of the executives reveling in this. They were not, for the most part, uh, they were not here. Uh, for the uh, 1995 World Championship. And for them to be here, some st- were, were in the organization then, just like Chip Moore a minute ago when I was talking to him. They were here, but not many of the others. So this has been a long time coming, and they are fired up. Hey, I know we've discussed this so many times, but I think it's appropriate that we bring it up one more time. 
what Alex Anthopoulos was able to do over the course of this season with all the adversity and, 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 and what what took place. It's to me, it, it's more than just executive of the go, year. Go. It's legendary oh, God, stuff. Hey, I got Ronnie Wash here. Fire man. away. I'm, what a thrill, man. How you feeling? I feel great. Um, I feel so happy for those guys. I feel so happy for our coaching staff. Me too. Um, we never let up grinding with these guys, and, and they never backed off the grind that we made them go through, and this is the culmination of it. You know, Brian Snicker called you guys rock stars, the coaching staff, when things were looking a little bleak at the 1st of July, and Alex went out and got you some players. It seemed like things turned around, but the work just continued. It just continued. And, you know, when we looked at the teams that was ahead of us, we knew they weren't better than us. It was just a matter of us putting our game together because we have baseball game. And we showed that when we got in the playoff that we have baseball game. Was there a little chip on the shoulder of everybody, too, when you were not getting any respect? Nobody picked the Braves even when you got to the postseason. No, we didn't think about nothing like that. There's a thing called inside-outside syndrome. We only cared what was going on inside. We didn't care what was going on outside. What size ring? I wear a size 10. All right, we got you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Congratulations. All right, brother. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Joe, I like that inside-outside syndrome. I did, too. That's beautiful. I did, too. That was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. So are you inside the dugout, Joe? I am. Okay. I'm down here down at the bottom of the steps as the guys are coming by. Way to go, George. Congratulations, man. World champs. Man. Yeah, you are. George Poulos, Frosty, some of the guys that uh, were not on the active roster but are still celebrating. That's an awesome thing. Here comes Dillick Derek Schiller. Congratulations, man. Where'd your cigar go? <laughs> I think we're going to have plenty of those soon. Okay, good good deal. Congratulations. A lot of hard work and Thank what you. a culmination. Thank you. You know, I'm glad you're part of it. I'm glad the whole broadcast team has been part of it. I'm glad more than anything our community has been part of this. You know, it felt like everybody kind of came together against um, all odds, you know, but the odds that people were facing in their own personal lives, the pandemic, et cetera, and the odds of this team, you know, all the ways in which we kind of got stepped on. Somewhat right. analogous to Freed getting stepped on here, right. Max getting stepped on in that first inning, but we stood back up just like he did, and um, here we find ourselves celebrating a world championship. It's a loaded question, but how did it feel seeing that trophy handed by the commissioner? You know what? Um, you, you could have had that trophy handed to us by anybody. We would have taken it. Uh, but it felt extra good. Look, I, you know, that's a tough, that's a tough job. And uh, I, I, don't, I don't envy it. Um, but today we're just focused on the World Series championship that we earned tonight. Uh, it's awesome. I, uh, before I, I let you go, and I, I'm far from the last question, but I, it is size 13. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, for you guys... I, Going back to 1995, I know Terry McGurk was here, but there are a lot of the executives that were not yeah. part of this. So this has got to be extra special that this is yours. Yeah, so Mike Plant and I joined the team at the same time 18 years ago. Uh, we've been talking about a World Series since the moment we walked in this door. And uh, I hate that it took us 18 years to feel what it, it feels right at this exact moment. Um, but I only now want to repeat it again and again right. and again because it feels right. awfully damn good. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of people that are back home and even some that came with us on this trip that, that made this all work, yourself included, by the way. And, you know, there's, there's so many people that make a professional sports team run. Uh, you know, there's about 500 people that work for our organization. Amazing. And so th this is as much for all of them as it is for anybody. You know, they, they, they're not out there pitching or hitting or anything like that, um, but they're doing all the things that it takes to make this organization run. That even goes into our game day employees and all, all those people that welcome our fans in. And, uh, you know, speaking of fans, obviously yeah. at the end of the day, this is for them. It, it really is. And I cannot wait to bring this World Series trophy back home and hoist it in the air with our players and have all of our community share in this with us. What a, what a turnout for the three games at home and the reception the team got, the thrill the fans got from the way the team played reminded me of the early 90s. I don't think I can remember fans being that raucous and crazy like they were at Truist Park, but but what a thrill. It, it is. It, it really is. And I hate the fact that we couldn't do it at home, um, you know, but we got it done, and that's yeah. the most important thing. And, look, 
you, you could probably hear there's there's thousands of Braves fans that attended this game. Yeah. I think they knew we were going to get it done. Okay. And so here we are. We're doing it in front of these fans that travel this way. And, you know, Braves fans all over the country. So this is a really cool thing for everybody throughout the country. Um, but I just cannot wait to get back to Atlanta and, and, and really, you know, get ourselves in front of everybody else and say thank you very much. We won a World Series championship. Thanks for the time. I, your, your throat sounds a little dry. You better go get something to drink. <laughs> I think I will. All right. Thanks, Derek. Thanks, Derek. Derek Schiller, the president of the ball club. And uh, appreciate his time. Guys are beginning to file at times, getting by here to go to the clubhouse. Time to go, buddy. Cigars in hand, drinks in hand, <laughs> towels. I've got towels now. And confetti everywhere. And confetti everywhere, and it's awesome. Hey, there's old Eric Durbin. Look at him. <laughs> he's he's wound up, man. Oh, no, 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 no. Hey, EY. EY, come here just for a second, man. Oh, man. Congratulations. There's another rock star, first wait, base coach. Wait, first, <laughs> I like that title, but you know what? I'm so proud of these guys because of what they endured the whole year, and they didn't quit. They didn't put their heads down when we were struggling. They kept coming to work every day. It, it's just a tribute to them. I, I'm so happy for them. Like, I'm going to get them my champagne, and I'm going to sit back and watch them. Why don't you? You know what? It's their time. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? Like I told Derek Schiller, your throat sounds dry. Yeah. So, yeah, I need some champagne. Get and drink. Yeah. Oh, what's up, Ryan? Hi, Joe. <laughs> All right, EY's hustling back into that clubhouse. This is just this is tremendous radio, by the way. Oh man, it's awesome! Uh, just hearing everybody in the background, and we've still got chanting going on and chopping going on. Cigars. I can't reach you. I'm too short. It's awesome. <laughs> man, oh man, I don't know what you can see up there, Ben. I can't see anything, but. People's people's leg. Hey, there's Will Smith. Hey, man, way to go, baby. How'd it, Hell yeah. How did it feel to be out there for the last out? It was pretty awesome. I loved it. Uh, having a seven-run lead helped, that's for sure. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Nice, nice going. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, what's next? Get, uh, go uh, little, wet your whistle? A little, yeah, a little champagne, maybe some adult beverages here and there. Um, we're going to have a good time. Hey, are you glad you came to Atlanta? Hell yeah, I am. <laughs> you are. All right, get in there and have Thank some you. fun. Thanks, Will. I'm joining you next, I guess. Yes. <laughs> Freddy, Freddy, just for a second. I know you got to go get something to drink, yeah. but I want to get your impression, first of all, how that felt to catch that throw. Uh, I still have the ball in my pocket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you're doing you, right, I, I do. I saw you shove it in there. I know, yeah, I had to keep that. So uh, what, a, what a cool cool feeling. Are you are you getting thirsty? I'm getting thirsty. Well, so. I'm gonna let you go. Come yeah. back out oh, though. Joe, okay. Way to go. Way to go, <laughs> Freddie. Love you too, man. Way to go, everybody. So, my gosh, people are coming by oh, here. So, coming down, yeah. So, so fast, Drew. What's it like out there? It's an unbelievable experience. Uh, it's filled with a lot of emotions. I think everybody's ready to get some drinks in them, but it's been a whirlwind of a season for us. I think everybody will admit to that from all the injuries we had to just everything that's happened. Just what this team's overcome has been awesome. And what about the, the feeling you had two nights ago getting a start? I, I was definitely had some nerves for sure, but it was honestly probably the least nervous I'd been before a start. Okay. But we definitely had to push through things and, and handle the environment. And now it's just the best feeling ever. We're World Series champions. Way to go. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Go get a drink. Thank you. Oh. Just for a second. Come here. Congratulations, Dansby. Thank you. I just got a hug from a world champion. How about that? How's that sound? I, give it to him. Right at home. Oh, man. I don't know. He told me to give it this to you. Congratulations, Ozzy. Check him out. Check him out. Hang on. Thanks, Rob. You too, man. We got more. Homas. Way to go, Adam. Way to go. Come here, just for a second, before you go get something to drink. Dansby's an honor. Somebody gave him a world championship belt. <laughs> this is back to back rings for you, Jock Peterson. How's it feel? It's awesome. Uh, price, speechless, priceless, everything above. 
great group of guys. I can't wait to go celebrate with them. Well, go in there and wet your whistle, man. Dansby. Great game. How much more special is it to know how much you contributed tonight? I'm just so thankful to win. Oh, my gosh. That's, that's my favorite thing in the world. And, I mean, I, I don't know how to explain that. I mean, we, we won the World Series. Like, I know. The world champs. I told you before game hey, one. Here you go. Oh, I, the trophy. Oh. oh, my gosh. I got the trophy here, boys. Take a selfie, Joe. We're about to go pop champagne. So. Well, hang on a minute. Uh, uh, I know you do. One second. <laughs> one second. Flip it around. Flip it around. There we go. All right, way to go. Did you get that selfie, Joe? I, I did. It went very good, but I had to hurry. Somebody, uh, that's wonderful. Somebody uh, gave t uh, Dansby a belt. It says World Heavyweight Wrestling Champion from Pastor Troy. That's fantastic. It's amazing. Big gold belt. Just pure jubilant unscripted beautiful radio here this you're just for a second i know you got to go wet your whistle <laughs> i got terry mcgurk i got the chairman here i see a big smile it's been a long time oh since i've gosh. seen that smile oh my gosh you know world champions it, it's it's you couldn't even make yourself think about it until it happened it happened 26 years i i, I can't wait to get back to atlanta and celebrate this thing with the people that really matter our fans and the people who have been waiting all the way along and you know, I, and you know what uh, the fact that it came in kind of, uh, with the team struggling like it did to turn it around like they did pretty amazing Oh my gosh, we were left for dead mid-year and you know the things that this team has overcome to get here I, I think it's a world record. I've never seen a team overcome what they've overcome go in there yeah. and celebrate enjoy yourself Terry McGurk chairman I don't know if there's anybody else left out on the field fellas because I think they've all I think you're right barrel rolled in there, but they'll they'll be They'll be coming back out shortly. And the fans are going crazy. You can see them. I can't, but I can hear them. They're going crazy, Joe. And I love this for them. I love this for our team, for our front office. And I love it for our beloved that we don't have here. Yeah. For this. Yeah. I, I love what Terry said when he got the trophy. Mm -hmm. He knew that Hank and Phil Nuxie were all, were both looking down. Uh, Bill Bartholomew, of course, also. And for... Our colleague Don Sutton, uh, who we lost in January, you know that uh, he had a little part in this tonight, too. Absolutely. So, uh, uh, with all the people that have uh, been lost over the last year, this is bittersweet. But what a wonderful ending to a season that uh, I'm not sure, as we keep saying, I'm not sure any of us really predicted, especially uh, in early July. All those men had terrific smiles, and that's what I'm thinking about right now is – the smiles that they would have on their face watching this and how much fun we're going to have the rest of the night. Hey, would you be surprised if I told you Rick Kranich just went by with a cigar in his hand? <laughs> That'd be the case for any day of the year. Yeah, it would. He is the cigar man, baby. And there's a lot of TV, of course, and uh, people wanting a piece of everybody. So it's been really nice that a lot of the guys stopped by to say uh, something to our fans here on uh, the fan 680 and 93.7 FM because um, they, they want to go inside. They want to go inside and celebrate. And I don't blame them, but they were kind enough to stop off here at least before they go do that. Yeah, going to go pop that champagne and one more champagne celebration. That's four of them, Joe. Yeah, I know, baby. I know. Um, you and Jay Chad, I said this uh, after we clinched the uh, we the team clinched the uh, division title that I was happy for you guys because I wanted you guys to be on the ride and we won the division last year and kind of got short cut short against the Dodgers and the NLCS came uh, within a game of getting to the World Series didn't make it but I'm just so happy and thrilled for you two guys to be a part of this I'm happy for the flagship station and all the guys that are involved with that uh, like Kevin like Chris and all the guys that are running the board ops and everything that uh, we're all world champs. We're all part of this. Right. And um, I, I couldn't be happier for all you guys. Oh, I, it means a lot to hear you say that. And I, I think of all these times where we've been riding to places for spring training or uh, road trips. We're asking you questions about 
what it was like to be a part of this series or the World Series or 99 or 95 or 96 and what it's like celebrating and being a part of teams like that. And we just got to live it right alongside of you. I know it. Now we can answer those questions. Absolutely. You know, we do the podcast, you and I, along with Jonathan. I don't know where Jonathan is, but he needs to get down there on the microphone for a second because I need to talk to him, too. He's, He's on his way. He's coming down right now. All right. He needs to get hooked up. All right, he's, he's on his way. Throwing on his cans right now. Okay, and sitting on his can as yeah. he's doing it. Hey, Joe. Hey, Jonathan. Congratulations, you world champion. Thank you very much. I cannot believe it. Are you still breathing? Barely. Okay. I, I, how's the heart rate and everything? Everything's okay there? Check again about 6 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> and sleep okay. with the door cracked. All right. We're going to have to all set our alarms for each other to call one another tonight and have rooms have the uh, front desk call and make sure we're all up to make the bus, whatever time that's going to be. I don't know if I'm sleeping, brother. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now, get it. We had to get in there and get us some tonight. I'll tell you what, we got some uh, got three early from the MVP, Jorge Soler. And um, I loved what he had to say in his acceptance, too, about how I uh, thank God he was so proud to be with this team, so happy to be here and loved his teammates. And that's kind of the, the, the common thread we hear from all these guys. Sure is. Well, they know what it's like to battle all the way through. They just won the final battle. But yeah. getting through 162, Joe, even if you don't make the, the postseason, it's such a grind. So to get through the grind that is 162 and then turn it on when the stage is the biggest and the brights, uh, the, the bright lights are on you and you come through the way that this team did, overcoming everything they did, it would have been such a tremendous accomplishment just to get to the postseason. But they go and win the World Series with everything that they had to, to overcome this season. It, it's really amazing. And uh, not to say that this this is any greater than any other World Series ever, but I just have a hard time believing there are a ton of teams that had this kind of a finish that overcame what the Braves overcame this year. It just really is amazing. Well, how about this? Um, I, I, I don't. I'm not one of those guys that likes to rub it in, but I, I'm just saying that um, this team was not given much of a chance to get this far. We know that. We know that, as I said right before the end of the game, only the Cardinals had worse odds to try to get to the World right. Series and win it than the Braves did. Uh, the Brewers looked past the Braves, uh, wondering if they were going to be playing the Giants or the Dodgers. And they looked past us, and the Braves won that one three games to one. They won three straight games, as I recall, the Braves did. Right. Under the NLCS, and we had no shot of winning that. Right, right. Not a, not a prayer, right, Jay Chad? He's nodding. He went okay. back to his post. Okay, we had no shot. Uh, we go out to L.A. We lose two out of three. So it looked kind of like, okay, well, here come the Dodgers. Uh, this, this happy party has run its uh, route. Well, it didn't even go seven games. Right. We won that one in six games. Uh, one of their pitchers uh, who pitched one of the last games was heard to say, uh, "I still think we're the better team." Really? You just had six games to prove you were the best team, and you didn't. Right. And the Braves did. And now take on the American League champs. It didn't go seven games. The Braves do it in six. And for all of the uh, underestimating of this ball club, I think it makes it that much sweeter. I think it does, too. And, um, look, it, not to say that, that the, so- the so-called experts have to be right all the time, but to doubt this team over and over and over the way that they did. Not thinking there was any shot they could get by the Brewers or the Dodgers or the Giants if they faced them or certainly the Astros or whomever emerged from the American League, and they did. And there's something to learn about what took place towards the end of the season and what the Braves were. What took place from, from April through the end of July was irrelevant when it came to the end of September. It was a different ball club. And, and to, to, to doubt this team because of what they might have been in May or June uh, that's that's completely overlooking a team. And um, uh, people should have paid more attention to what this team was. It was a very rugged schedule for this bunch in the month of September. Yeah. Think about that West Coast road trip. They yeah. saw the Dodgers. They two saw the, them. the Giants twice. Yeah. Uh, to their two uh, road trips to finish the season were both West Coast road trips. They played very good teams, played good baseball. The games they lost were tight games, but for the most part they won. Uh, they, they went out and won, I believe, 23 of their final 30 games, counting the postseason, and just took it to these teams and just shocked everybody along the way. But how you look 
in August and September and going into the postseason, that's what matters, not what you maybe were not in April, May, or June. And I love that this team proved that. Yeah, I, I, I agree, Ben. It's uh, Again, it's just what makes it more fun. Mm-hmm. When people doubt you and people think uh, you don't have what it takes, when people think that uh, this is a bunch of vagabond types, um, and you say, no, this, this team came together. And it's absolutely right because uh, – Every guy, every new guy that came into this clubhouse kept saying, this is a cool clubhouse. We were welcomed with open arms. I feel like I've been here for a couple of years. So um, I don't know uh, what, what, why everybody was doubting it, but uh, it was awesome. You're right. And it's one thing to think that the other team might win, but there's a respect factor there. And it just didn't seem like that was there uh, for several rounds. I think it's there now. They're the best team in baseball. Undisputed. We are the best team in baseball, and there is no doubt about it. That is right. Got the hardware to prove it now. No kidding. Joe, there's going to be a parade. What do we do for the parade? We're going to throw Oreos all over the place. <laughs> I, I'm, we're going to take. We're going to use your idea. When we're on that parade route, we're going to be tossing double stuff Oreos to everybody. Yeah, we're going to come in there with about a hundred packs of those things. Just be chunking them. Well, why not? Why not? Yeah. So be on the lookout because we're going to be tossing them. Can't wait for that thing. There'll be, there'll be a lot of tossing tonight, too. I don't know what it'll be, but you never know. <laughs> tossing them back. I know that much. <laughs> it is going to be wonderful. Yes, it is. It really is. Well, um, when the guys, I, I hope they're having a heck of a celebration. I hope you can see it on the monitor. I hope they've got some cameras in there. But uh, there's Jonathan Kerber, too. How's the party going in there? Oh, oh, look at Freddie. Freddie is soaked, baby. Yeah, he is. He's got his goggles on. His shirt's soaked. Kerber's leading him out to some other one more interview, and there goes the scrum. My gosh, they, the little puppies are following Freddie toward home plate, <laughs> and they can't get enough of Freddie Freeman, and we understand that. Man, oh, man. But if Freddie's coming out, that means more, some more guys might be coming out. Right. And uh, as they do, I'll be grabbing some of them. Well, here's the thing, Joe. We don't have to be anywhere till February. <laughs> we we got all the time of the world. I just learned that the parade will be Friday. Oh yeah, yeah. So more details tomorrow, but there will be a World Series championship parade in Atlanta, Georgia, this Friday. How about them apples? I hope I'm 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 awake by then. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> no kidding. Oh boy, that 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 sounds wonderful. Uh, isn't that perfect? Yeah, that is perfect. It does. Oh uh, man. Well, here's what I love. This scene that I'm seeing right now as I'm sitting in the visitor's radio booth, is all the families, uh, friends and families of these players and, and them getting to celebrate this with their uh, their husband or son or relative, loved one, friend, whatever it may be, uh, and getting to see so many people on the field enjoying this and celebrating it with them. You, sell it, you, you win something like this, you want to celebrate it, not just with your teammates, but with those closest to you. Oh, yeah, and, and I could hear uh, uh, Brian Snitker when he was on the stage uh, saying some things like, uh, honey, honey, <laughs> yelling, yelling to Ronnie to try to get her attention. You know, we did it. it was, that was right. so awesome. I mean, think about Freddie and his and his father, and and, and even his son, uh, Charlie. Yeah. Um, and, and you just mentioned Snit and Ronnie, and, and think about all the sacrifices that Ronnie had to make when Snit was in the bus leagues, going all over the place, and and, and right. with the kids and everything that she had to do in order to uh, take care of the family while he's trying to make it happen and make ends meet in baseball. I know. And, and getting to the big leagues is is an, an enough story that to make it incredible, but to win the World Series. Uh, all the sacrifices that they made, 45 years in the organization, Hank being uh, his first boss, uh, Snit, and, and getting this opportunity and, and hoisting the trophy. Uh, that's just a, a story that if I saw it in, in a movie, I'd say that wouldn't happen. It would make a good movie. Sure would. It would because I don't think people have any idea. They have no – they don't have a speck of an idea Mm-mm. about how this all how, – how much it takes, how much sacrifice there is. Way to go, Dansby. Dansby's soaking wet. He's coming out. His hat is soaked. Goggles are soaked. Max, congratulations, kid. Hell of a job tonight. Real quick. Just real quick. Tonight, little uh, maybe a little chip on your shoulder? Yeah, I just knew that it was going to be my last outing of the year. Obviously, the last one kind of had a bad taste in my mouth uh, at the end of it, and I just wanted to make sure that I was going to 
leave everything out there. I wasn't going to have any regrets, and, you know, if they were going to beat me, it would be all of me, and it just worked out. Did you make any adjustments from the last start here on game two? Just kind of used all my whole five-pitch mix and just wanted to kind of keep them off balance and uh, not fall into too many patterns. Were you ready to go back out for the seventh? Uh, I was toast. Gassed. I was toast. Just, I was gassed. Yeah. yeah. More mentally than physically? Yeah, just, just the whole thing. Well, you did a great job. Congratulations. You're the winning pitcher in game six of the World Series. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Joe. Champion. Thank you. Way to go. Thanks, Joe. Not bad for a kid from Santa Monica. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That is Max Freed. I love it for him. Me too. Love it for him. And he's, he's, uh, he looks exhausted, guys. Mm-hmm. Well, he, what he turned in tonight, Joe, is, is something none of us will ever forget. I mean, that was a legendary performance. Yeah. Tommy John surgery, traded from the Padres to the Braves, climbed the ladder go, man. Uh, out of the bullpen a few years ago and then becoming what he's become and, and winning game six, the clinching game of the World Series. What a journey. Yeah, that's, that's, that's truly awesome. Truly awesome. Hey, Rick, you got a second? Rick Kranitz is going to join us, cigar in hand, of course. It didn't get wet, did it? No, 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 no. Beautiful Padron I'm smoking, and uh, the, the, the owner, Padron, was was kind enough to ship four boxes for us to win this thing. Oh, no kidding. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah, it was wonderful. I know it was, and I know how much you enjoy them, but not as much, perhaps, as a world championship, huh? Oh, my gosh. So, you know, it's really surreal, right? I mean, from where this club came from, um, you know, halfway through the year, it seemed like we were just kind of spinning our wheels, right? And, you know, we lost so, so many key players. And, wow, and then Alex did his magic, and he started bringing in guys. And, and uh, it just it was, it was a, the perfect fit, right? And that's the other thing, right? Alex brings in not only, you know, good players. He brings in quality people, you know? I mean, guys with good makeup, that's, that's what he does, right? And absolutely the guys all gelled together. And then when Travis came back, that was like the finishing touches on it, right? That was like a, one of the biggest trades that you can make was having Travis come back. And, and he caught every inning. Every inning. And, you know, I can't say enough about how well he caught. And, and the fingers that he put down were phenomenal, right? I mean, my gosh. Some of the, some of the sequences I just blew me away. You know, it's like, oh, my, you know. But, you know, they believe in it. Max believes in it. And... You know, he just he's reading he's reading swings, he's reading, you know, situations, he's reading stuff, his stuff. And 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 that's really one of the huge reasons I think we were able to put down that team because they're a very dangerous club. Talking to Max just a minute ago, he looked exhausted. He was. I said, you know, could you have gone back out for the seventh? And he started shaking his head like and I said, Were you toast? He said, I was toast. Well, you know, that that the first inning you know, nobody really understands, right? It, only, it was only 14 pitches, but when you really look at it with, with the stress that would happen with it after getting stepped on and then the jam, right, and then he gets out of it, that's, that's like, that's like an, you can tack on another two innings on that, right? So once we, even though it was a zero, which he did put up, you, you start looking in the dugout, we start looking at the back, back end of the game and says, okay, he's probably not going to finish this thing regardless of how many pitches he has because of how he got there. Right, and he laid it all out in the line for sure, right? And the emotions uh, behind it all, too, you know, that get you to the point to where, you know, you get a little exhausted out there. But he was—he laid it all on the line. He he emptied the tank there in the sixth inning, and we knew it. Well, uh, it was an awesome job, especially in light of the injury to Charlie in, in game one. You lose him for the rest of the series, and everybody else had to step up. Well, they really did, you know, and I feel so bad that Charlie's not here, right? I got a chance to... FaceTime with him, and and he he was able to be there with um, when Snit had his speech. So he got to see that, and he got to see the explosion of the champagne. I feel so bad that he's not here, right? Because you know our one just a huge presence on this team, right? I mean, we knew once we got Charlie Morton that we had a big game pitcher, but but not only a big game pitcher, a better person, right? Right. He's a pitcher, and that's, that's like I said, I, I keep, he keeps coming back to Alex, right? Making these moves based on not only talent, but good people um, to, to mesh in the, in, the, in the clubhouse and on the field. Well, congratulations. You're a world champion. Is this right? your first ring? This is my first ring. First time going to the World Series. 
right, in a long time, 40 years, 42 years, man. And, and uh, Wow, that's awesome. Oh, my gosh, right? I'm just so happy I don't have to look at any more video, <laughs> you, you know, and, and, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? It's over. You know, I just had about, I had, I had, I don't know if I got a done yesterday. Or real quick, more, real said. quick. Thank you. you Thank it. you, Rick. Austin Riley, real quick, I know you got people tugging yeah. at you. And they know who we are, so we're okay. We're okay. Congratulations on Thank a great you. series. Thank you. No, it's 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 truly amazing what this what this team has gone through, what what they've overcome. Um, these guys, I mean, I I, I I wouldn't trade them for the world. I mean, this team is it's special, and, and to be world champions, it's it's unreal. Uh, and and the way you contributed too, the way you played in the World Series, you, you're a big part of the success. That's got to make you feel good. It does. You know, like I said, you you. You, you play this game to, to help contribute, um, and, and that was one of my goals this year, is just be more consistent, be be able to be accountable, be that, that guy that they can count on me, um, and, and just truly blessed to, to have the season that I did and, and to be a part of this. What size ring do you wear? I think a 10, 11. I bet it's bigger than that. It might be, but it, 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 we'll get. We'll make sure it's fitted. All right, buddy. Thank you for the visit. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Austin Riley. <laughs> nobody knows nobody knows what size they are i, I have no i've never been fitted for a ring yeah, i think yeah. i've been fitted for one minor league ring and i don't i've never worn the thing hardly see nobody knows yeah we're, know. we're about to find out joe i found out what mine was <laughs> yeah <laughs> ready you knew in the 90s ozzy you got a second okay all right okay ozzy will be back he went to get his flag his curacao flag perfect um no, these guys are so fired up, and you can see the, the look in their eye. You're looking at Austin, those, those big old blue eyes of Austin Riley and how thrilled he is. My gosh, this is quite a scene down here, fellas. This is the best. And we got uh, pictures being taken down at the end of the dugout with the trophy. Um, like Orlando Arcia just got his picture taken with it. Everybody's got their guards. Eddie Alvarez with the trophy, so it's awesome. You look wet now, Derek. Hey, Mike, wait Hello, a minute, buddy. wait a minute. Yeah. We didn't talk to you yet. No, you haven't. Mike Plant. So, 18 years? 18 years. Derek and I came in at the same time. And? This is an unbelievable experience we've waited for for, you know, 18 years, and those guys just put it all on the field today, and we're so proud of them and proud to be part of this incredible organization. And uh, you've been an Olympian? You've been, been, part, you've been yeah. a part of that kind of kind of action. Uh, how does this compare? This is the pinnacle for me. Yeah. You know, it really is. Just you put your heart and soul into this, this team, this organization, our fans, what we created at the Battery, what we saw this weekend at Truist Park, and we, tonight, there and too. tonight, and tonight is an, uh, absolutely unbelievable. So a memory I'll never forget. Way to go, Mike. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. You're world Thank champion, you. man. Yeah. We, no, well, those guys are. <laughs> I'm just had, happy to be part of the whole scene. Mike Plant. A couple other guys have squeezed by that got out before I could grab them, but we'll have some more come in in just a second. You guys still up there? Did you already get out? Wait, wait, wait. I got you. I got you. I know. You're going to get a picture. picture with, you're going to get a picture with a trophy. Okay. Yeah, I got Ozzy here. Congratulations, world champion. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm so frozen up. You don't even know right now. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel how wet you are. <laughs> but you've got your your national flag from Curacao. Yes, that's awesome. You'll get that pic that picture with the flag draped around uh -huh. you. What's that mean to your people back there? It means everything for my little island. I'm I'm always playing all out here and uh, supporting them. They support me all the time. So I gotta t say thank you to all of them. Yeah, it's a wonderful thing. You played great, great year. Are you tired? No, I'm really, actually really energized and happy to keep going and celebrate. Okay, well, you go go do that. Thank you <laughs> Thank for the you, visit. Chip. I appreciate Way it. Way to go, Ozzy. Come here. Come here real quick, real quick. Yeah. Got Adam Duvall here real quick. Congratulations, world champ. Oh, man. This is... It's got a is, nice ring to it. Oh, it does. It does. Uh, you know, just thinking about all the hard work all these guys have put in, the hours, the, the, the sweat and grinding, and uh, this is what it's all about. This oh, is, oh, it's yeah. what makes it worth it. But you know what? With the acquisitions that Alex made, you were certainly a big part of that to come over here. And you were already here before. You knew what it was like. But yeah. 
how is it that these guys come in, everybody, the new guys come in and just immediately are part of this ball club? Well, I, th- I think it's uh, it goes to say a lot for the culture uh, in the locker room. Uh, you know, those guys coming in, it's not easy to be traded in the middle of the season. But but the guys that were here <clears throat> embraced us with open arms, made it made it an easier transition for us, and, you know, we just took off running. Well, you, you certainly did. You had a great postseason. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, I've asked everybody, I'll ask you, what size ring do you wear? Uh, that's a good question. I got to. Nobody to, knows, but everybody's yeah, anxious to find exactly. out. <laughs> that's right. That's right. All right. That's right. Adam Duvall, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. These are great, Joe. We're hearing from pretty much everybody. Oh, it's wonderful. Uh, there's a there's a photographer that's set up down at the end of the dugout with, with lights. they got confetti blowing on the players, and they're holding the trophy, and it's a wonderful sight. Oh, a wonderful amazing. thing. That is great. <laughs> uh, it's, and, and, and the Latin players uh, all have their flags draped around them. It's a wonderful sight. Hey, Walt. Walt Weiss here. Hey, and Brian, come here. You, no, stay here, Walt. You were talking, Snit. Congratulations, Thank you. the old timers. I know, right? Yeah. You were talking up on the stage, kind of wet. You guys were talking on. You were talking on stage about your rock star staff, man. Uh, I, I don't think that even covers it. No, it doesn't. I mean, I, I just told those guys in there. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be able to do that. All I do is screw everything up when I get involved. I just kind of stand back and let these guys work. And I couldn't do it without this guy. I know that. This is my wingman right here, man. And I know. It, it's uh, he's how I roll. <laughs> Forty years, buddy. Yeah, I know. It's kind of uh, took me a while to get here. Yeah, but it's worth it. It's isn't worth it? every second. That's why I said in, in one of those, I tell all the guys in the minor leagues that are that are riding the buses and grinding through all that. You just you never know, man. Just keep grinding because you never know when that call is going to come. Well, is this your first ring? My second one. My sixth World Series. It's so hard to do, and, and you know it took six times to get my second one. But um, I tell you what, it's been a long time. I, I haven't I haven't I haven't won one since '89. Um, you are old. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But hey, the best thing—I I, I can't wait to see Brad Pitt play uh, Snit in the movie. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys, congratulations, Thank man. You. Thanks. Uh, let's all get it. size for rings. I've been asking everybody. I Nobody know, knows right? what size they Nobody are. Knows. I'm a 13. So there okay. you go. <laughs> well, you'll, you'll get one. Congratulations, get one. fellas. Thanks, Way to go. <laughs> Brian Snicker and Walt Weiss. You know what I think about Joe is when you get down to spring training, is anybody does anybody beat Snit and Walt down there? Uh, does he do anybody beat him? What D- does anyone beat those two down to spring training every oh, year? Oh no! I mean oh. they are there first. Yeah, and it's a man the the work that those guys have put in between getting to spring training. And I think Snit said he went right after the Super Bowl, right to right now. I mean you're, you're talking about eight months straight exactly. every day. Yeah, I know. Nuts. All right, Joe. All right. Come on. You guys look wet, man. Did you get anybody, any of that? Did you get any of that in you, Brad? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Brad Scott's the, one of the conditioning guys is certainly in condition to raise his right arm. Okay. That's good. Um, what else? Let's see. What, we, what else we got? Guys are now being surrounded by reporters, uh, getting pictures, as I told you, being taken with the trophy. Um, it's a wonderful thing. It's a great sight. Way to go, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Way to go. What else, fellas? We've got, um, whenever we're, go ahead, Joe. I got Kevin Seitzer. I got Kevin oh, Sykes. give me a hug. Oh, you got it, baby. I don't care how wet you are. <laughs> I know. <laughs> now, Holy crap. what a year for you. Oh, man. I, I mean, not just ups and downs, but but uh, physical oh, issues that you yeah. overcame, hip it's replacement. So it. it is so worth it. It is so worth it. Uh, they said, well, you might need to have a hip replacement every year and have your hip pop out twice. I go, okay. I go, well, wait a minute. Let me think about yeah. it. But this is special. Yeah. Well, talk about your ball club. Talk about these guys and the ones that you work with, the hitters. <clears throat> Excuse me. What, uh, how have they been to work with? Unbelievable. I mean, the new guys that came in, I mean, have just been spectacular. They got their, their really micro to minor 
adjustments. I mean, they just fit right in. They synced right up with our guys. They blend them in the clubhouse. They were just, they were perfect fit guys. And oh, by the way, they could flat mash. So yeah. it helped big time. Well, our fans have been watching Freddie. They've been watching Dansby. They've been watching Ozzy. They've been watching Austin. I want to know about Jorge Soler. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I am so fired up about when, every time he comes to the plate and, and what might happen. Tonight he hits a ball out of the stadium. I mean, I mean, have you ever seen much? Have you ever seen anybody with this kind of power? Hey, Ronald Acuna has that okay. kind of power. Okay. Yes. But the discipline, the plate discipline, I mean, the, the way he sees the ball, the timing, how short he is, the power he has. I mean, he's. Uh, he doesn't strike out that much. No, he's a special talent. And I mean, when our guys are chasing with nasty, nasty out on the bump. He's the one who's checking off the chase pitches. I mean, he's got serious plate discipline, and I've been ultra, ultra impressed since day one we got him. Uh, uh, really am amazing what he's done. He's the World Series MVP. That was a pretty good pickup. <laughs> yes, it was. You'd think. Doovy help, Jock help, Rosario had a tremendous postseason. I mean, we're not here right now if it isn't for them. Yeah, and Richard Rodriguez, too, he, had a, he had, right. did a good job. Yep, he was awesome as well. Well, this ball club, I keep saying over and over to the guys upstairs as we're talking to Ben and Jonathan and to our fans that uh, this team was kind of overlooked. You know, even at, at the beginning of the postseason, only the Cardinals had worse odds to win the World Series than the Braves. And here you are. <laughs> well, we always go back to the beginning of the season. We were picked to to finish fourth in our division. So yeah. we go back that far. There was, and there was one guy. There was one guy that picked the Braves and stayed with it through thick and thin, thin and wouldn't change his boat, and that was Mark DeRosa. Right? Yeah. And he he's a former Brave, and yeah. he knows yeah. what clicks yeah. here. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank World you. champion, man. How's that Thank sound? You, man, unbelievable. First time in my life I'm so fired up. Oh, that's awesome. Way to go, <laughs> Kevin. Buddy. You Hard-earned. I appreciate it. Thank you. That was Kevin Seitzer. And now I am scouring for more. Way to go, Braden. I just love you got that. I can't wait to see that selfie you got with the trophy, the blurry selfie. Oh, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's funny. I don't even know if I'm in the picture. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if Dansby's in the picture, but the trophy is. <laughs> and then again, somebody, um, Gave Dansby this world championship wrestling belt. Just handed it down to him. It's still sitting here on the in the dugout. Um, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you should put it on. Well, I would, but it, it's not mine. You know, I, I don't know if that's blasphemous or not to put on somebody else's world championship belt. So I'm gonna just guard Let it. Be. I, I'm just gonna right. guard it here for a minute. Yeah. Woo! This is awesome. This is the best. And everybody's so happy. You know. Yeah. Everybody's so fired up. <laughs> Hi, Chris. Everybody's just knocked out, happy, and uh, it's a great thing. It's a great thing. It is the best thing. What a moment. And what a night, man. Huh. What a night. I know we have got Wiley and Kevin that we're going to be sending it to as soon as we're finished, Joe. So you just let me know when... Uh, when you've done all the damage you can do down there. All right. I think everybody's pretty much played out. They, they've all been very accommodating. I don't know who we've missed, if anybody, but uh, I'm going to send it back up to you guys. It's all yours. All right. Sounds good. You hang. Uh, Jay Chad told me to tell you to hang there. We're going to come join you here in a little while. Okay. All right. All right. Well, that'll wrap things up for us. And this is just a, a memory that we'll always have. And it is, it's just amazing. I, I we read this every single year for the last game of the season, and um, it, it's always bittersweet because the season ends, and and usually this doesn't happen, but it has happened. And when we get down to spring training next year, we get to continue celebrating this opening day. We get to celebrate this. There will be a parade on Friday, and this celebration is going to go on and on and on through the off season, all the way up to opening day of next year, where the Braves take the field in those gold trimmed uniforms. Uh, on opening day at home. That is going to be beautiful. Our next broadcast will be February the 26th, 2022, when the Braves face the Red Sox at Cool Today Park in Northport, Florida, for spring training 2022. 
I, I just have to take time right now to thank our guys in studio, and they are unbelievable. They are so talented. They are so good. They are so dedicated, and they're the best. They're reliable. They get the job done. We broadcasted this season, counting spring training, over 200 games, and with you just about every single night. 206 is the exact number. Uh, We could not do it without those guys back in studio as they are there. They do what we need them to do. We do what they need to have done, and uh, it's just tremendous. And we thank them so much. Uh, Everyone who is involved on that side, our flagship, the Fan 680 and 93.7 FM, uh, for all the help that they have for us. Jonathan Chadwick is the most dedicated person I have ever worked with when it comes to what we do. Uh, He is so reliable, so dependable. He's there every single day. Uh, It it doesn't matter. If we got three hours of sleep the night before, we had a long West Coast road trip, it's spring training or a long drive or whatever it may be, he's there. And everything is there and everything works, and and we could not do it without him. 